let's face it, most of us either like to watch football or play football, whether it's professional, college, or high school. But keep in mind, most of them people that play, they got their start somewhere, and more than likely, it was probably in rec football. And right now, the Joppa Town Seahawks are holding registration for football and cheer. We'll have a link right here on the podcast in the podcast notes and also on our website, HartfordCountyLiving.com. So go on there and sign up. Again, that's the Joppa Town Seahawks football and cheerleading program. My name is Rich Bennett. I want to thank you for tuning in to Hartford County Living. On this episode of Hartford County Living, myself and Lyle Garrity sat down with a group of gentlemen from the Susquehanna River Fishing Club, Darwin, Chris, Josh, and Lil, and talking to them about, oh my God, just some of their experiences on fishing and some of the myths and everything about certain types of fish, like snakehead fish. It's just unreal. I was floored by what these guys do. And a couple of them are out there every day in their kayaks, mind you, every day fishing. As a matter of fact, when we recorded this, uh, a couple of them had gone out early in the morning and they were ice fishing. This just shows how dedicated these guys are. So sit back and listen. This is a, a great podcast. And who knows, afterwards, you may decide to go out and try to catch some snakehead, some brown trout, or something else, and just bake it, fry it, or throw it on the grill this weekend. the Harford County Living Podcast with Rich Bennett. Thank you for coming and please send any suggestions or comments to podcast at harfordcountyliving.com. The Harford County Living Podcast is produced for your enjoyment and show notes can be found at harfordcountyliving.com. Come back often and feel free to add the podcast to your favorites on our feed or iTunes. All links are in the show notes. Now let's join Rich Bennett and his special guest. Nice and warm in here, thank God. Yeah, it feels good. I'm still frozen. We were <laughs> ice fishing before we came. Really? Yeah. Well, uh, up at the Susquehanna, I take it. Where, whereabouts? Perryville. Any luck? A little bit. Wait a minute. Before you came, what time did you go out there? Six. <laughs> Man. It was cold. These guys yeah. are true fishermen. <laughs> it was cold. It was They're out every day. A little bit. So when you guys go out there on the I mean, we're... You mainly go to the flats or closer to the dam, above the dam? All of it. Or a little yeah, the whole thing, the whole It just thing. depends on what's, what the season is, I guess. Yeah. But, well, obviously doing. you're shop, or shopping, fishing year year long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ice fishing, man. When's the last time anybody's going ice fishing down this way? Last year we did it. Did you down yeah, here on yeah. the gunpowder? No, no, not down here. Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But up on the river. Yeah. Wow. Same thing froze over. That was, now, what are you that hit- was a fun year. Yeah, what? what are you hitting when you go ice fishing? Yellow perch. Yeah. Yellow perch, okay. Not, not all the bass days. or anything. Occasional walleye. Mm-hmm. And you guys get you guys are going to get the stripers, too. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. Now, how long has the club been in existence? The club? Yeah. Uh, I want to say it's going on its eighth year. You guys been around that long? Yeah, well, it wasn't, it wasn't, first of all, it wasn't really a club then. It was Susquehanna River Fishing Club, but it was more just a Facebook page. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, you know, it's always been about entertainment. It's just an entertainment site. And then the last two years, we made it into official a club where you can join. Last year, we did a do. This year, we're not doing dues. We're, uh, we're going to do some tournaments, and it's going to be pay-in tournaments. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, you know, it's a, it is an LLC. It's, you know, it's basically a business, for lack of a better word, but... Uh, yeah, so Don started eight years ago. He was just, you know, made a made a Facebook page and just posting pictures and mm-hmm. posting other people's pictures, and uh, it's kind of turned into what it is today. How many members? So paid paid members this year, <laughs> we have around a hundred, I think. Really? Yeah. Um, then you know, just the Facebook page, it's like twelve thousand likes. So wow. it's it's, 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 yeah, yeah. it's grown yeah. grown in popularity. Now, uh, you said it's a business. Have you guys ever thought about going nonprofit? Yeah, 
we're so that's what's that's the next step. Okay. Just because it's easier to get you know donations from people that way. Well, I was going to say because of all the snakehead fish and all that, I would think I would hope you'd be able to get grants for that because aren't they? Yeah. I mean, isn't the government everybody begging for people to get the damn snakeheads out of here? It's, it's weird, you know. <laughs> there, it's. That that is it's honestly that's a big misconception about okay. snakeheads is it's not it's not illegal to release snakeheads as long as you release them in the same water that you caught them. I thought they were invasive. Eating the they other they fish. are they are invasive, but that being said, they've been down at the Potomac for fifteen years, yeah. something mm-hmm. like that, and they still have bass tournaments yeah, there. Bass so I didn't realize they've been there that long. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. The big thing with snakeheads is you know they they coexist. Lou's actually the the biologist here, so he probably has oh, better really? terminology. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm studying in Frostburg for earth science, but I'm going into fisheries biology um, after I graduate this May. But the, the snakeheads kind of fill a different niche than the bass, like a different like a different position basically like a job position in the waterways around here they eat they eat the same fish but at different times and in different locations and largemouth bass and smallmouth and all right so there. what is the pr- it's not snakehead fish or frankenfish what's the actual proper term for it a snakehead yeah like northern snakehead i don't know the scientific name northern snakehead yeah these are yeah, northern that's snakeheads. the species there's in northern a, there's a lot of different snakehead species but these come from like northern central asia bullseyes in florida yeah, yeah they're southern. more southern fish those are bigger they, but they need warmer water to go off what lou's saying about you know they fill that different niche they also have add more forage for bass and, mm-hmm. and pickle oh, and other yeah. fish yeah they're they spawn so many times like nobody really knows how many times they can spawn a year it just depends on the water conditions but they can you know these guys have gone down to blackwater and seen fry all fry year. balls yeah. all year when the locals, really? the locals tell me up to five times a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wow. We've caught them, yeah, throughout the whole year. <laughs> every other time, maybe with fry. Mm-hmm. I mean, but the, the eggs, bass will come in and the eat crappy, twenty of them and everything. Yeah, wait a minute. The bass are coming in and eating the snakeheads. The, the snake snake fry, fry, yeah, fry yeah, the, the babies. Baby snake oh, the baby yeah. snakeheads. Yeah, they'll okay. they'll come and rush a fry ball and eat a bunch of them. So in a way, I mean, it's not as bad as everybody said. In a way, it's also no. good. Kind of bouncing each other out. Yeah. Exactly. Like, you know, yeah. in the beginning, they kind of go rampant and go crazy, but it seems like they balance out eventually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. There's actually a guy in our club, um, Stephen uh, Cambreros, I think. Yeah. I, I'm, I could be butchering his last name there. <laughs> but he just, he's getting ready to release a, uh, like a series. He went and met with this snakehead specialist that lives in Virginia. I can't think of the guy's name. Nice. Eric. Something. Eric. Yeah. And, uh, the guy is like the leading expert on the northern snakehead, and you know he's basically trying to put those myths to bed that they're right. going to kill everything, and you know they're this Franken fish, and when in you know actuality they're a great sport sport fish. I mean, people they're, travel. They're amazing. I mean, I these gonna, guys yeah. are traveling hours at a time to yeah. get it down and catch them. I was going to ask, do they put up a good fight? Oh, like, uh, really? Second to none. I mean, it's the top water bite on them. Yeah, they're mm. aggressive. Oh, so it's top water, not bottom. Oh, I mean, yeah, you can you catch, catch them on okay. baits and whatever, but the top water big draw is the top, top water. Is the me- the, the just the, they like show themselves before they hit the lure. It's just exciting. You'll see, really? like, you'll yeah. see like a swirl or and a then wake. A, yeah, a wake. Falling you in, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow, we got to get out fishing again. <laughs> yeah, you guys <laughs> so definitely fun. hit them up. They're a lot of fun. You'll so, see it wake, yeah. and then it'll stop or something, so you have to throw it back out <laughs> and try to get it to come back. And Wow. Yeah, and then it's real fun from a kayak. Fighting a big one, big snakehead from a kayak. There's. I was, I, <laughs> I was going to ask about that because I see a lot of people fishing from kayaks. These things have to be monsters. I mean, the kayaks. Oh, yeah. don't you have a live I, never, well I mean, you see how big there? I am. Yeah, I'm yeah. 350 pounds. You don't have a live well in yours, right? I don't. They make a live well that bolts them. I have what's called a Hobie, it's the pedal drive. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's 14 foot long. It's got like a 650 pound weight limit. So I mean, it'll hold some weight. What's the weight limit? 650. Wow. Yeah. Dang, my vibe's 550. I'm surprised. Yeah. That's, yeah, that is weird, isn't it? Pretty good. Extra 100 pounds. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I mean, kayaking has just erupted in the last yeah. 10 years, maybe. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the sky's the limit now. Now everybody's getting towards motorizing them and. And, God. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for a kayak. Yeah, uh-huh. right. I well, mean, the aftermarket. The news, why not? <laughs> the, the aftermarket for them is just—it's crazy. I mean, it, it is. Just, it is. You know, it's like a—it's—it's it's like uh, uh, bass fishing. You know, kayak bass fishing. They just gave—I uh, want to say first price was over a hundred thousand yeah. dollars for one tournament. 
Yeah. So it's you that, know no, that was the championship. The right? champion, yeah. yeah the which championship. it takes. There's a couple of steps to get into the national championship, but a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, that's yeah. a good. Is pay, that that's actually a good sponsored pay by Bayes? Yeah. Uh, yeah uh, it's uh, Torquedo, which is actually okay. a sponsor of ours this year. They're a big, big name uh, tor- uh, sponsor for them. Uh, Bonafide Kayaks is another one that's really big on sponsoring KBF. KBF was like the first bass kayak bass fishing tournament series. Okay. So they really got in there, you know, while it was fresh and kind of set a name for themselves. So they're they're the ones when it comes to kayak bass fishing. Is that what the majority of the members use kayaks? Yeah, yeah. we do have really? a couple of boaters, yeah. but yeah, most of our members are all kayakers. Which is awesome because, you know, we all meet up and go out mm-hmm. together and, uh, you know, the camaraderie with the kayak and is, you know, you just pull up next to your, your boat. We all link up together. Yeah. Even the yeah. boaters come up. Yeah, even the boaters. Yeah. 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 So, like, this weekend or uh, this last weekend, we all, all of us went out except for Lou. And uh, we went over to Perryville, <laughs> and we were just, you know, pretty much just hanging on to the docks, fishing, talking, laughing. Yeah. So, it's, you know. There was like, probably, like, nine, ten of us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there was a lot of us out there. Got awesome. little heaters in these things. Yeah, yeah I wish. <laughs> yeah, as much money as I got into mine, I should. <laughs> but yeah, no, we do wear dry suits though, survival okay. suits when we're out there. I mean, then you guys go all out. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's yeah. Nothing, like when we're it's cold weather like this, yeah, you got to be prepared. Put skis on the bottom of the kayak. Yeah. Push it on out right. there. He he was breaking through ice last year. Yeah, last Get year. at it in a which, kayak. Yeah, which in hindsight wasn't really the smartest no, thing, but. but it's it was, cool to watch. you know, it was fun. <laughs> wow. I flipped I yeah. mine about six weeks ago. If I didn't have a dry suit, I probably would have died. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was. So they're not easy <laughs> to roll back over then? They are. I climbed on top of it and just paddled it upside down to shore. <laughs> right. I hit a strong rip current in a, uh, the C&D Canal. And it rolled. I was going under a bridge. I shouldn't have done it, but... <laughs> so you guys are going, I, I mean... Everywhere, not just yeah, we, I mean, oh, yeah. you're going mm-hmm. everywhere. Well, well, I'm in since I'm in Frostburg, I kayak Deep Creek Lake all the time, Yachtin oh, nice. Reservoir, on uh, Savage River Reservoir. They're so really much. awesome to kayak. Full of yellow perch and bass. And there's a little lake closer to school called New Germany. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. tiger muskie in there. I got three in there last year. Not off a kayak, but um, I plan on fishing that lake in my kayak this year and trying to get a few. They were fun. Now yeah. you you talked about tournaments. Have you guys? I mean, have you guys actually held any tournaments? Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Last year we had uh, let's see, six tournaments. Yeah, last year's tournament. eight tournaments. Eight, 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 eight tournaments. Eight, yeah. eight tournaments. Plus our, we have the the Snakehead Roundup every year, which is down in Cambridge. That's the Snakehead tournament. Um, but oh, that wow. wasn't included in our membership. That was an extra, just paid in tournament. But uh, we had eight tournaments for our members. Um, majority of them were on the flats. Um, there were a couple. We had one down in. Um, Dundee Creek. Dundee Creek, that was which was a dud. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, no back in the day, that. like, I'm sure you guys remember Dundee. That was yes. the place to bass fish. Yeah. yeah. I mean, nobody caught a single fish. No. Nope. Really? Yeah. There's also Out money. of, like, well, how many people? Two above the dam and one at Mariner. We do, yeah, we do have the one up at Conowingo Lake and Mariner. Uh, Mariner. Mm-hmm. Oh, here at Mariner? Yeah, yep. Yeah. We did have one have, there. How did you do here? And people caught fish that one, so. <laughs> <laughs> it was better than Dundee. <laughs> But uh, some of them had two heads. Well, and the thing about I mean, you know, you guys know how fishing is. You know, you could go out and do everything right and still never catch a fish. Like me and Chris were talking about the other day. You know, people say they don't get skunk fishing, aren't fishing enough. You know, that's part of fishing. You're going to get skunked. You're going to you got to learn from those skunks and and move on. But yeah, that that day at Dundee, we even had boats. There was two boats, weren't there? Yeah, yeah, Lou was on one. (laughs) Yeah, we we ran from we got we ran down down the bay a little bit and then we ran all the way up to the Bush River. That we ran out of gas at Outer Point and had to get gas. We were on E, rolling into the into the docks. That was fun. Was, we went everywhere and still couldn't find a fish. Just one of them did. days. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we, we that was so funny. We were like, we just didn't know what to do. But, and the cool part about like, our tournaments, they're not super competitive, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. You're right, like, there's, there's a couple guys everything. that are super competitive yeah. with it, but yeah. most of the guys still are healthy. Very good to have a good time. Yeah, I mean, at the Dundee, we, you know, everybody probably fished hard for two hours, and then it was pretty much just a hangout session. <laughs> yeah. the rest of the day. Well, just like on the flats too. We all were like, yeah, yeah let's go eat. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> But you yeah, know, well. it's it's a good, and that's what we're after. We're after for the the brothership, the right. the 
you know, the closeness of it and not really the competition. I mean, you know, winning an extra 500 bucks on a Saturday, sure. Doesn't hurt, yeah. Yeah, yeah right. you know, but uh, it's it's just for the, the fun of it. And this year, no, you're not charging dues? For this year, no dues. Strictly tour- just people tournament. If you want to compete the in the tournament. Because a lot of people, uh, you know, they paid, but they weren't really into the tournaments. Right. And it, it kind of scared them away. So we're just trying to, to get back to, you know, if you want to pay to be in the tournament, you can pay to be in the tournament. Yeah, so. well, average, what, what's it running for a tournament? For, for somebody to go The buy in? Is it 60? Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's 60, yeah. yeah. It's 60, 60, and then it's an 80% payout. <clears throat> so yeah. wow. Don will, you know, keep his fees for. We use a, an app on your cell phone called iAngler. So okay. it's a catch and release tournament. None of the fish are harmed. That You know, you catch them, you put them on a, it's called a bump board, uh, which is just a measuring device. Mm-hmm. Snap a picture of it. Uh, you upload that to the app, um, and that shows it gives you a GPS location of where you caught the fish, mm-hmm. uh, the length of it, and then it's based off of length. So no no weight like Bassmasters or the right. FLW. Make totally sure dissolved. the mouse closed on that. Yeah, one. make sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get penalties. So, and then Don. <laughs> Do what? Yeah. If you leave the mouth open, it adds some length to the fish. Really? Yeah. So they deduct. A oh, buddy yeah, of ours a, lost a last year. Inches or so off. Yeah. The right. Of mouth, yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Even the uh, the KBF series that we were talking about earlier, they had a big uh, scandal this year. A guy cut a tail off of a fish, and when he was landing on the board, he held his hand over the end of the fish with the tail <laughs> sticking out the other side to add another oh, two or three inches. Man. So yeah, he he. Got, I, I don't remember what ended up. I know they prosecuted him for it, but. Yeah. Uh, that's a big, big money tournament. Yeah, yeah. That's you know, you know, yeah, yeah. People go through all lengths, you know. Yeah, it's it's yeah. crazy. Another thing too on the on a tournament day, Don gives it uh, just a, a card or some kind of identifying mark, mark, and you lay that on the board next to the fish. So you know, try to prevent cheating or right. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so you can't you know, say, "Oh, I caught the you caught a fish last week," and you want to right. try to upload it during yeah, the tournament. Exactly. Right. And the cool thing with like yeah. iAngler. It tells when you like, if I upload a picture right. from my gallery, it'll tell when I took the picture. So if I uploaded one today, but it was from yesterday, it would say you uploaded it yesterday. Right. Yeah. So you can't cheat. No. Yeah. No. I, mean, it, I mean, there's ways hard. to cheat. You know, well, if yeah. you want to cheat, you're going to cheat. But, it, but yeah, it tries. Better hope you're in an area that has cell phone coverage too. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. Well, you can, thing. Yeah, and you can you can <laughs> submit the pictures at the end of the day with like if you were just to use okay. a regular digital camera. It allows for that also, but uh, as long as it's a date stamp, the same day. Yeah, your date yeah. stamp, and you're going to have that that daily marker right. that you got that right. morning before you went out. They, you don't go out using your phone, do you? I mean, you're rolling kayaks. So <laughs> <laughs> he got it. He got his brand new phone, and what was it? The day met day later, twelve hours later. Twelve hours later, he spent eight hundred dollars on this phone. And <laughs> it's the only thing that survived. We ended up catching three of my rods, but most of my gear. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. They, <laughs> and one of the rods was his was his father's that yeah. is not here. So he, it was a ve- you know a very very important yeah. rod to him. Right. And you you caught it, didn't you, Chris? We didn't get that one you back. You didn't get that no, one we back? Got, uh, we got, oh, I thought you got that one we back. We got Mind his him. custom. We got his custom. Oh, he, man. He, got my, he had two of my rods with him that day. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you're putting all this money into the kayaks. And what's the average cost for somebody? I have the, the big, I got the big dollar rig probably yeah, in the club. Okay. I probably got five grand in it. Yeah, I got a lot of money. My kayak new was thirty eight, thirty six hundred. I've got a Torquedo <laughs> motor which was nineteen hundred. You can get a good one for seven hundred yeah. to a grand. You can. Yeah, I spent yeah. the sky's the limit. On mine, it's a thirteen foot kayak, and nice and comfortable. I spent thirteen thousand on mine. What? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Why did you get a boat? <laughs> so, yeah, so Chris just came over to the dark side. He has yeah, the pedal drive now. Now the in the kayak industry, it's all about the pedals. You know, yeah. just easier. It's more efficient. But uh, having that you still have your hardcore guys that easier like to the paddle. These guys, yeah, these guys are still paddling. But, I got yeah. a motor. Oh, he's, he's got, got the motor. Yeah. You, this year. <laughs> you can spend anywhere though. You can spend anything on a kayak. Mm-hmm. Really, I mean, I had a little sit-in. I mean, all of season last year, just a little, little sit-in kayak, and we were out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's well, that's a good question. Um, do you guys? Use or prefer sit ins or sit on tops or sit on tops, sit on tops, sit on tops for sure. Really? They're just more mobile for fishing, you can yeah. move around a little more. And 
Yeah, it kind of makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's easy to flip a sit in, too. <laughs> Especially if you're. If Take you're, it from the pro. <laughs> if you're grabbing a 40 or 50 pound rockfish, it's mm-hmm. easy to flip. Yeah. Trust yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, I have a picture of one from last year. I caught well, probably maybe like 30, 30 some pounds. And there's a picture of me holding, and you can see my water line uh-huh. is like super He's about close. To take water yeah. Inside. <laughs> yeah, most of the st- uh, sit on top kayaks you can actually stand on now too. Yeah, I can, yeah. Stand, I can stand on my vibe. They can stand on their hobies. I can stand on mine when boats fly by, making four foot waves, no problem. Mine's it's like a less surfboard. stable than theirs. <laughs> I was gonna say, it looks yeah. like a, wow. It's like a sup or something, like a stand up paddleboard or. Mm-hmm. I took a. It wasn't my personal hobby, but I took a hobby out into the ocean down in uh, near Miami. Last year, last year, so that gives you an idea nice. what kind of stability they. <laughs> they're they're awesome. Yeah, sailfish. yeah, I call, actually caught a sailfish from it. Really? Yeah. 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 From, was, a kayak. from a kayak. Mm-hmm. It was awesome. So these things have come a long way. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. People yeah. like when you tell people you kayak fish, they're like, "Man, you're crazy," but you know, they're real. They're super. I mean, yeah, they're I mean, almost a boat. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was gonna say because I've seen some that have you know the depth finders and all that. Oh, it's yeah. like, mm-hmm. yeah. What in the world? <laughs> yeah. I mean, sure. Oh, you yeah. have one on your. Oh, yeah. I don't. I have yeah, one, yeah. but oh, you don't uh, have it? remember, I rolled it. What? So, so you broke it you I uh, was fishing Lapidum area for the striper, the trophy striper run mm-hmm. last year in April, and uh, somehow I don't know what happened, but one of my drain plugs came out. So I'm, you know, was out there for two or three hours. I was with my buddy Fox at the time, and uh, I started noticing that my boat was listing. And you know, if your boat starts listing, you got water. In it. Right, right. So I opened up my center hatch, and it was just full of water. Oh. So no, I called. Like yeah, yeah. Like and I was like out in the middle of the water. They were running like 80, 70 to eighty thousand uh, CFS, which is pretty good water movement. N- enough that you wouldn't want to swim much in it. Right. right <laughs> and. Right. Uh, so I called my buddy, and he came over, and I started loading my gear in his uh, kayak, and he has a motor on his as well, and he just was powering me over to the shore. And we got within 100 yards or so, and there was actually another club member there that has a boat, and his name's Connor. And we were yelling to him, and uh, so he brings his, his boat over to, my, to me, and it just mine was completely full of water at that time. It was like coming up into the floors, and I mean, it was it was crazy. <laughs> so Man. as soon as he made that turn to come up to the side of it, my boat just titanic on me. Mm-hmm. It just rolled, and in doing that, my buddy, I don't know if he he, he said I fell into him. I don't know, <laughs> and uh, so he rolled. So we're both swimming in. It was like 40, 45 degree water, maybe something like that. We both had dry well, suits on, yeah. and. Uh, there was another uh, girl there her named Kayla Hale. She's a local, and uh, she came over and got my buddy in his boat. And I'm just worried the whole time about my boat. It's completely underwater. I'm like, if, if I let go of it, it's gone, you know. Mm-hmm. So we got it tied up, and I carry a really nice uh, DSLR camera with me for, you know, taking pictures. And I had I had it in a dry bag, and oh. I had uh, – <laughs> so the dry bag's gone. We couldn't find it. It's this bright orange dry bag. I mean, you're not going to miss it. So I sees it. <laughs> no, yeah, it's just gone. It's gone. I mean, it's nowhere to be found. So right. by then, another boat came out and picked me up, and we tied off my boat to his. And we kind of putted around trying to see it. It was right before dark, so, you know, you're losing light. And uh, on the way back to the dock, my buddy Fox was already back at the dock. Well, he had flipped his kayak over, and the dry bag had actually got hooked on one of his rod holders. Nice. So it was laying <laughs> under his kayak. So he's holding it up, and I'm screaming, you know. <laughs> the guy in my boat's probably like, this dude is nuts. Like, what is in that bag, you know? But, I mean, honestly, it was probably a fifteen to $1,600 bag at that point. True. And yeah. uh, so How much? It was probably fifteen to $1,600. I had my DSLR nice camera, camera in it. In I had a wow. nice lens on it. And then mm-hmm. I, may, I maybe had a GoPro and, like, a one of those little remote chargers or something in there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, so <laughs> we get back. By the time we get back, the EMTs are there. I mean, Haverhill Grace Fire Department was on it. Like, I, I mean, I was probably in the water like 10 minutes. And by the time we got to the dock, they were there. Yeah. And, wow. you know, we come up and we're in our dry suits. And they were just like, oh, they're in dry suits. Everybody leave. So they all just, yeah. <laughs> they're like, they're good. They're walking. <laughs> You're like, they're yeah. Fun. yeah, it was crazy. But, yeah, so then we got everything back into the dock and, you know, pulled up. And uh, it smoked my fish finder. It was underwater the whole time. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah, I found out it was one of the drain plugs were just gone. You guys are really serious about And then I came out the next, the next weekend, and I caught a 42-inch rockfish out there. Yeah. Oh, so what? It was awesome. <laughs> it was awesome. So, yeah. Did you get your camera back or no? 
came I got the camera back. Okay. So I ended up losing. I was loaning a rod to my buddy Fox, which is a, it wasn't a very nice rod. It was just a you know throw. I, I didn't mind losing it, and I lost a GoPro, <laughs> oh. in my my fish finder. So it was all a pretty all, it was it was pretty expensive. Uh, learning experience we'll right. call it yeah. now the drain plugs are all on my checklist before i go you know <laughs> but uh no i did the same thing about about 12 what is this 2000 about 13 years ago 14 years ago up at cadoras i was getting out of my kayak my foot slipped on a slimy rock and i had my camera oh. in the water it went <sighs> ruined i tried soaking it in alcohol yeah you know, displaced the water didn't do it oh. totally gone i think you weren't you you might have been on that trip Man, yeah, that's boy, tough. That was, I, so I can, I can, yeah. I can feel for that. Yeah, that was a big loss. <laughs> was it a DSLR camera? Yep. Okay, okay. Yeah. At least yeah. that. At least then, at least you could get your pictures off of it. You know, yeah. if it was a really old camera, you'd just be. Yeah. No, I did luck. get the pictures, but yeah, the camera went. Yeah. Now yeah. oh, we know man. to make stuff float proof. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Or get insurance rod. on it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They do. They do offer insurance now. Yeah. You can get insurance for your kayaks and gear and all that yeah because mm-hmm. you didn't have insurance on your fish finder no, did you? no. <laughs> which it wasn't i mean in the grand scheme of things you can spend thousands on fish finders <laughs> right yeah. and uh it wasn't a very expensive one so yeah. uh, no i gotta ask this then i mean all the money into the kayaks you got the fish finders and now we knew the cameras 800 dollars phones <laughs> right what's your average cost you're spending on your rod and reel I build custom rods, and all these guys have gotten custom rods from me. You build them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, I build them to order. But, uh, yeah, he still has his. He's, I think, do you still have yours, Chris? Mine was broken a car. Oh, that's actually. right. Ooh. And then he messed up his and his Hobie. <laughs> but yeah. they run from 150 to the sky for price, yeah. just depending on what parts you get. That's just for the rod. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then yeah. you Reels pair with a $250 reel, $500 <laughs> setup. That's what mine is. That's Hopefully my wife isn't listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> Usually I only spend like 50 on a rod, 50 on a reel, but yeah. I spend like 500 $150 rod and reel setup from the store is usually a pretty good bet. Oh, yeah. I mean, it comes down to this. You know, if you want to buy something that's going to last for a year, right. as much as these guys use their gear, you know, you buy a cheap rod or reel. Mm-hmm. Or maybe mm-hmm. not so much the, the rod, but the reel, you're, it's going to be, you know, sticking and, and it's not going to be smooth it's after a last. year. Where yeah. if you yeah. spend the 250 you know, it's going to last. Right. Yeah, I used to go through a. I, I trial fish a lot with my ultralight rod and reel. Mm-hmm. And I usually go through a, a reel a year. Because I use them so much and I never clean them. Stick them in <laughs> sand and yeah. 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 I, I, I just finally them. spent the money on a nicer one, two hundred fifty dollar reel, and I it's lasted like two and a half years. But I even dunked it in the Savage River in Western Maryland last year. It was like eighteen degrees out. It froze solid. Wow. But it's it still works. Just, just like new. Yeah. yeah. So, so you but you it do clean that solid. one every year, right? <laughs> no, I still, no, it's, I'm it's scared. It's got to a magnetic it. oil. In yeah, it. I'm scared it, to open it. I don't, every time I open a reel it, and put it back together, it comes out worse than before. So <laughs> I don't mess with it. Yeah. <laughs> I do not like messing with those. Yeah, the Stratics are expensive. It's fun. We all, all four of us have Stratic, the CI fours. Yeah, yeah. They're really, really nice. Yeah. You can spend even more than that though on it. We were at sure. we right. we Cabela's yesterday. One yesterday. Yeah. Oh, my the Stellas. God. Oh yeah. <laughs> the Twin yeah. Towers and stuff. Yeah. Whole, I mean, thousand dollar reels. Yeah. You know, for just bass fishing. It's not even offshore. <laughs> yeah. There's a guy I follow. I may on YouTube be embarrassed to join with. the club and go yeah. fishing now. <laughs> no way, man. No, no way. Way. never. Hey, my Zepco's not holding. Yeah. Oh, there's well, plenty of guys, guys using oh. and I mean, stuff in our club. Re- yeah, really. Yeah, there's oh, yeah. All, all sorts of ranges from, and everyone catches fish. It doesn't matter what you have. It's just, oh yeah. It's, it's just when you hook that fish of a lifetime. Yeah. You want to have the best gear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you want to hold that that fish. You don't want to lose it. That's how I think about it. You now, know. is everything you guys do catch a release? No. You got it. You got you, I was going to say, there are sometimes no. you guys go out there to catch yeah. and want to eat it up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, snakeheads. No, everything has to be snake yeah. Snakeheads, snake snake I can't miss it then. All right, I got I to gotta ask, because I'm dying to try snakehead. Oh, and, and I've been telling my buddies, I said, you catch snakehead, bring it to me, because I want to cook it. Yeah. What's the best way to cook it? Grill it? Josh, Josh, Josh. Josh. Josh, what's the best way? <laughs> Deep fried. Oh, yeah. Really? Deep fried. Oh, my yeah. God. They look so good when they. Oh, so good. It's like a meatier version of a walleye to me. I like them just a hair better than walleye. So bread it up and just, or you just stick I the take, whole thing I in take, the deep fryer. We do it at our work. We crush up croutons, put in Old Bay lemon pepper, and 
I think it's cheese and garlic croutons, mm-hmm. and then put eggs, bread it, throw it in the deep fryer, just, what, 90 seconds? Yeah. That, and really? Just, like nuggets? Yeah, nu- yeah. yeah. Making a nugget. Yeah, nugget it up. Mm-hmm. Man. Those, those, those the way you clean them, it's so quick, too. Like, you kind of got to nugget them up, because the snakeheads have, like, two sets of bones, from what I've found. If you do them in fillets, you're going to be picking while you're eating. So- do you have to uh, scale? I mean, do they have scales or are they like catfish? They do have skin scales. Them? So yeah. you don't skin them. Mm-hmm. You don't, when you flame, you just cut the. Yeah, you just cut the skin off with a knife. Okay. Yeah. So the same way. It's a really catfish. firm yeah. meat. It's it's like a really firm meat. It's not very flaky. Mm-hmm. Um, I compare it to like tuna, but it's not that it reddish. Doesn't taste like tuna. It's not the yeah, reddish. But you don't want to eat it raw, probably. I wouldn't eat it no. raw. Yeah. They, they <laughs> do really have some freshwater fish raw. Yeah, they do have worms and. Sometimes. There's another. I can't think of a name, but yeah, you want to, You definitely want to cook it. Some of the yellow perch we recently caught had worms too. Mm-hmm. A lot of those do. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. When you say worms, you mean they're like not a little, little kind of, kind of, of like a parasite? Fish. No, no. no, no. no. Okay. Little, little, you can little little see it. <laughs> I caught a yellow perch last year, and I was filleting it, and it had like a zit in the side of it, oh, and yeah. I popped it, and it was a worm. Oh. <laughs> oh. It was gross. Luckily, it was like the last one, so I just yeah. like chucked it. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, it's good. The raccoon, you did. <laughs> yeah, the raccoons around my house love me. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, it was gross. But yeah, the snakeheads, they're, they are. They're delicious. They're really mild. No fishy flavor. Anybody yeah. would would probably. My kids love it. I read somewhere, and I guess it was on the eastern shore, but a lot of the restaurants along the shore are basically asking the fishermen to bring them in. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's actually a restaurant down in uh, Baltimore, and I can't think of the name of the restaurant. Is I know the Charm guy that City owns it. It's Charm City. It, the guy's name's Chad Wells is the chef. That's it. Okay. And uh, he has like a snakehead platter that he offers there. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was on, I'm pretty sure he was on that PBS show, Outdoors Maryland, at one point. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where I saw it. For the, for the first I found time. yeah, I found them on Facebook. Yeah. That's the nice thing about Facebook with fishing anymore. It's oh just like a huge network. Yeah. It's just it's the best and way to connect. Yeah, with fishermen. Well, that's I mean, how I found out about you guys. Yeah, right. Yeah, it was on Facebook. Mm-hmm. I mean, I get shoot. You guys are probably the same twenty to thirty friend requests a day. Oh yeah, and it's just all fishermen. Mm-hmm. It's just. And then, I mean, we we talk to people from, you know, Virginia to. California, right. and everyone's just, I mean, for the most part, everybody's just interacting. It's a community, pretty much, and that, yeah. that's really cool. Get to talk, to, hear different stories. You can link up and go fishing with somebody else, you know? Yeah, especially with kayak fishing. You can take your kayak wherever you need to go, and you don't yeah. need to ride on someone's boat. You can link up with them and go on any part yeah. of the water, really. And Isn't there a local kayak thing. company? Yeah, um, Stark Moon. Star. Stark Moon. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, they, they don't make kayaks. They, they don't make them, but they yeah. sell them. Okay. He's Brad a uh, uh, feel free dealer. But uh, yeah, Brad Nelson. He was big in the whitewater world back in the day, and right. He's got a pretty interesting shop up there. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, I guess with the kayak, and more people are going into the uh, fishing ones instead of the whitewater ones now. Well, is, whitewater's still a huge oh, yeah. sport. I mean, big. that's actually I think that's really Brad's bread and butter is his, right. his connection with the, the whitewater. He still has, I mean, I follow him just on Facebook, and he <clears> always has these new up-and-coming river boats, the whitewater mm-hmm. boats, and, you know, people are traveling thousands hours, of miles yeah, to just buy this boat from right. him. He's I don't know anything about whitewater. Like this big, and it was in the world championship. I think it won. He bought really? it or something. Yeah. yeah well, it's, it's small. It's like I was going to say, it's what, three foot? You d- I was like, is this for a midget? He's like, no, this <laughs> won the world championship. <laughs> they built a, Those guys are nuts. Up at Holwood yeah. Dam, they built a whitewater raft. Whitewater kayak and course. Yeah. Oh, really? On the Hartford County side, but up in Pennsylvania, I guess it's York County. They, they'll run it every like twice a month, and kayakers will show up and Who's, do the oh, course. One of the girls in the club, doesn't she? Michelle, Michelle did that. Michelle, Michelle right? Renee. Yeah. 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 Oh, uh, Holtwood right. Dam. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. really nice up there. Yep. Oh, yeah. It, and it's fun when it's low, you can walk out on the rocks and catch walleye. Yeah. If I was <laughs> 30 some years younger, I'd give it a try, but no. no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little That's my thing. I want to do everything yeah. while I'm young. Right. You know? yeah, I want to it. just do experience it. as much as I can experience. Right. right. You know, I don't have all the money in the world, but I'll I'll give everything I got to go, you know, try and catch this certain fish. Right. Yeah. No. McCollum says to go up there now. Now, somebody that's never done this, like me. Is there any place around that you know of where you could actually like rent a kayak first to go out there and try it? Northeast Park. They have a. Lock Raven. Lock Raven. Mm-hmm. 
Dundee. Right down, yeah, Dundee. Dundee has a place. No, where you can catch fish down. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah Lock Raven is probably the best bet. Lock Raven. We need to. Yeah, Lock Raven yeah. need the kayaks. Yeah, they have, yeah. Kayaks. they have kayak. They have kayak. kayaks and canoes for. I think it's like twenty dollars for okay. a kayak yeah. to rent. Don has a um, a guide service if that was something he'd be interested in. Yeah. yeah. So he'd have a kayak for you and all the tackle. Okay. You could go out with him for a, a day or whatever. Mm-hmm. He mostly stays. He's a flats fisherman. He really likes to fish the flats. So, that being said, that can be a tough day of fishing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not a lot. I mean, it's just uh, I, uh, me personally. I've never really done very well on the flats. Right. With, with you might bass. get three fish, but they're usually, usually they're quality yeah. fish, mm-hmm. nice six five pounders. And you see, you probably got a ton of boats out there anchored in everybody. Well, where we, you know, because kayaks can go where boats can't. So well, yeah, that's true. You can yeah. stay in that skinny water, the weeds, right. you know, yeah. which is where the fish are. Right. You, know, you want to fish those those weed lines and and. You know that that's such a thing, but mostly where we fish on the there is a back channel that has occasional boat traffic through it, but just I'm, stay out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Stay out. Because now, as a kayaker, you, the boaters have to give you the right away. Okay. Right. Yeah, since you're yeah, unpowered. You're, yeah, they're under. We're not yeah. unpowered. Yeah, unpowered. So unpowered same, or underpowered. Same, same, yeah. with, same <laughs> with sail. Yeah. You know, sailboat has the right of way because they're unpowered. Yeah. Same yeah. thing on the trails. A pedestrian has the right of way for yeah. bikes and horses and the rest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Same. But yeah, there and you know, there's all these um, accessories that you can buy to illuminate yourself. They got flags with lights mm-hmm. on them and lights. You know, there's no reason not to be seen on the water. Yeah. With, with my new battery battle. box, <laughs> I have two like outlet plugs on the battery box for uh, my trolling motor I'm going to put LED lights all in the inside of my kayak for night fishing and then put a light bar up front so I can night fish on that off of that too that's, that's really fun that's night fishing yeah. night fishing with kayaks or yeah, that's a yeah. Well, that's that's a, all the lights already when I was um, before we started that's why I asked you guys because somebody said you guys went to, to Mariner went 100 yards <laughs> out shined a, shot at night and then shine the lights down, and that's when you saw all the snake heads. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you guys do a lot of night fishing then. Yeah, I do oh, a ton do. of night fishing. That's one of my favorite yeah. things to okay. do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. During Especially the summer. Yeah, during the, the dam. Yeah, and during the yeah. summer, night the fishing year, it was flooded all year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was bad. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the things about the Susquehanna is all, all fishing is based upon the dam flow. Right, yeah. So if it's it's huge flows. Flows. even above it, even yeah. above it, if the dam's running, the fishing's not going to be good above the dam. And, and that's five hundred and forty-four miles. I forget exactly all the way up to New York. Four forty-four. Right. What is it? Four forty. Yeah, four hundred and forty miles. So then you have to it's worry well. about all. Yeah, you got to worry <laughs> yeah, about all right. that weather. And we're at the yeah, very yeah, bottom, yeah. so we get everybody's we're at the mercy trash. Of it. I was gonna say because because yeah. I know boating, a lot of boaters said it was just miserable this year because of all. Oh, it was bad. Yeah. So yeah, um, a lot of debris. And it started with all the ice jams that happened last year. That, yeah. It's like it never quit yep. after that happened. I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. yeah it was I crazy. Yeah. I went through, um, I remember I went through Safe Harbor area just driving up towards Columbia, PA last year, and it was insane. It's like iceberg size. Jeez, I can't iceberg wow. all about down the that. river. Yeah. Holy mm-hmm. cow. Yeah, yeah, this year they had a lot of debris up in front of the dam yep. that uh, got dumped once they... You know, flush the toilet per se. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And, there was uh, a lot of yep. one of our members, uh, uh, Kenny Adar, <laughs> did a video from down in Perryville that got like it was over a hundred thousand people. He went yeah. viral for a few it was, days. It was pretty pretty crazy. Wow. But a lot of people just don't realize that that's what happens. You right. Know? And it's like I said, it's a collection of everybody's trash and debris, mm-hmm. and it's not really anything that they can do because a lot of it is you know organic trees, branches. Yeah. And when that water gets high, anything that's sitting on the bank is going to get pulled in, and then it collects at the, you know, right. each dam. And they, you know, the, I know Conowingo used to make efforts to try to clean it. Try but to clean it's it so in. much that yeah. they'd spend months trying to clean this water, so they pretty much have no choice. It'll but be to, 50 years from now, somebody will figure it out and how to clean up. Just put yeah. big nets in there to yeah. catch everything. Well, they need to dredge, dredge it. Big, yeah, the yeah that's the, the talk big now is dredging it. The track of the dam is it's so it's at its level. It's full of sediment. Right. If you go out there with a fish finder on a boat, it's where you think it's going to be like 100 feet deep. It's probably like 25 or 30. Yeah, it's 15, interesting because it was at one time upwards of 150, mm-hmm. 200 feet deep. Mm-hmm. Now it's the all town full of sediment. Kind of Wingo is sitting under there. Yep. So you're right. It's you go out there. It's 10 feet deep, mm-hmm. yep. but it's yeah. 200 and feet of silt. The, so, so, so the town's now buried under dirt. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The, the big worry is yes. if a big storm event comes through, like a 100 year flood, 150 year flood, and breaks the dam. All that sediment washes down the bay, and it's done. It'll just, that'll kill destroy, destroy the oyster beds, destroy the crab breeding areas. Destroy 
port deposit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All those new houses they just put up. Yeah. Gone. But, um, yeah. Yeah, We got pretty. The sediment's not good. They opened up, what, 40 something spill gates this year? I think they opened like 38. 38, and they were they were uh, evacuating mm-hmm. Port Deposit and Happy Grace. And, yeah, Happy Grace. They were there was flooding and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's, it's Man, been a weird dude. year with that dam. <laughs> it has it's, been a weird it's year. It's never. It hasn't calmed down. It's just. It seems like it's just starting to start calming down and yeah. get clear again. But it's been. Yeah, totally. It's been muddy to all year. To get ramped up after all the yep. snow yeah. and melt. Mm-hmm. It was clear this morning, surprisingly. Yeah, it, it's been clear the past couple weeks, the like past two weeks, but for the rest of the year, it's mm-hmm. always been at least murky. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, the monster storm this week up in the northeast, so wait for all that to come. Oh, yeah. 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 That's yeah. Uh, I didn't think about all that. And then one thing, like with kayaking up there, they have a hotline you can call. Right. You know, to find out what they're going to be pushing, like the... CFS and uh, which they don't always stick to. Trust yeah, me. subject it says subject <laughs> they, to change. They about that, but, but um, sounds like a wrestling a, card. Subject yeah. to change. <laughs> yeah, you got to call that number because sometimes you could be out there and you know be like, oh, I'm fine out here, and right. then all of a sudden those sirens go off. You're on the other side of the dam like, and, or oh, no. island, and yeah, <laughs> that's got to be scary. Man. It is. You got five, <laughs> wow. Yeah, you, you got know, five minutes sometimes to get over. They don't even they, give you yeah, that. they'll just no. open it. They don't. I mean, they can't really do anything. They're just like, hey. so if you're above there, you better have a motor on your kayak, <sighs> or you're going. If you're that, or you're going straight, down, it's going to be you're bad. You're going down. Yeah, you, that's a lot of water, the water right there. Com- in that if the water little... comes on, you can, a lot, you know, if you're an experienced kayaker, you can make it down the river and get out safely. But you're not going to be where you park. You're not going to be going east no. and west. You're going to be going south. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, right there by the island, it's like a super funnel right there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's probably yeah. the, one of the narrowest yeah. spots of the river. Wow. And you're right there. Right there at the dam? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you got all that flow coming from the dam. That would be wild. <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to be I can just there. imagine if you see that. Down river, that. it starts calming. Right. Because yeah, it gets wider. But yeah. up there, it's... There was Even a guy boats, last year. It can be dangerous. Remember yeah. that guy last year that got caught out in the big flow like that and flipped his kayak a couple times? No. Mm-mm. It was. I, can't, I think his name was Carter. Oh. Carter Urban. Oh, I remember him. Don, he's one of Don's good buddies. I was oh. white perch fishing out of Lapidum one year with my friend, and we watched a. It was a little white boat on its side came down past us. And we're like, what the heck? <laughs> on its side? And then, yeah, and then two people came floating down with it, hanging onto coolers, and we got them out. <laughs> That, that's uh, the guy Andrew Workman you were talking about. He he actually had that app to him mm-hmm. last year, or the year before. He pulled this some was guy like out. four years ago, but uh, they said they flipped at the dam and came all the way down the river. They lost Dude. everything but their boat and their cooler. Just floating on the a trip. on the capsized kayak all the way down on on their cooler. On their cooler, they had a yeah. little thirteen foot fiberglass dinghy that they were in with a little tiny motor. They got their boat back, but by the time we had my friend's boat and I, and then his uncle was out there. His uncle got the boat. We saved them and the, whatever gear we could find but um and they were like oh we don't want the boat anymore <laughs> they, left the boat. They, did, they did not take it they didn't no nope. oh they, they were they just drove away like, we don't want it all right see you guys yeah i think That's we wild. went one of the festival one matthew and his buddy found on the shore and uh, i think they tied uh, it up to that the last <laughs> island up near port deposit just said uh, they just left it. It. <laughs> see oh, five years man. ago when my son when danny was what 10 yeah, or me, when me, you, and Danny went to up there, and we rented the boat. Yeah, yeah. Little rowboat, we have a motor on it. We yep. get out there. We're in the, you know, below the dam, but we're in the middle, fishing. Of course, I didn't catch nothing. They did. <laughs> and uh, time to go. So Law goes to start the motor. <laughs> Here comes the cord. Oh, oh. 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 <laughs> could not get oh. that thing started. Oh. So it was like, okay, go to row back. We didn't check the boat before we left. It was one oar. Nice. Uh, <laughs> that, that oar was probably a hundred years old. Yeah, dry rotted. <laughs> yep. It took. Us, we got back. It took us a good while. I think then we would probably would have wished the dam would have opened yeah, up. Yeah, it was hard to go in. Yeah. <laughs> man, now you guys ever yeah. go out into the bay? I I, I do. Mm, and now do with the new kayak I just got, I'll, I will be. Right. Yeah. But uh, the other kayak I had, I didn't trust it out there. I would trust. He got stranded. An opportunity to go. <laughs> you got stranded out there, or what? Which time? Which which time? time? <laughs> Carpenter. Yeah, we we got stranded. But you were with me. He got I sun poisoning. He got sun poisoning that day. He couldn't move his kayak anywhere. He couldn't relaunch it because the waves were. Sinking. Yeah, it was it was mm-hmm. bad. It was a city. We launched out of Perryville and floated all the way down to Carpenter's Point. Like I don't know how many miles, mm-hmm. but. 
It was bad. Wind picked up to like 25, wow. 30 mile an hour. Four foot, <laughs> four foot waves. It was crazy. I took mine out of. Um, <laughs> we, st- we had we took a vacation in Nags Head, in North Carolina. And I took I launched mine off the beach there. My kayak and fished for like five hours just off the beach. I was trying to catch Spanish mackerel, and every time I would cast out, they'd bust over there, and I'd paddle over, <laughs> and then they'd be. <laughs> I didn't catch anything, but so I was out. I, I put my time in. Four hours, I was out there, and they would just always. Now, know, how far up were you? About like three hundred yards. And then that night, I did it three times, but I would launch my kayak, like, right before dark and paddle as far as I could. I think the one time I made it, like, my, my parents guessed, like, 500 yards out from the beach. It was dark wow. by the time I got out there. Pitch black. It was kind of sketchy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A little bit. I could see the shorelines. So I was all right. It's a dorsal fit. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> but I dropped big baits, big piece of mackerel out there for a, on a shark rod. We wound up catching You did? A, yeah. I wound up catching a pretty big, a pretty big stingray like the size of that table. Dang! And <laughs> as I pulled it on the shore, it gave birth to like six or seven big wow. stingrays. That's wild. Well, that's all I was wondering about the bay because one of the things I love to eat out of the bay is the cow nose ray. Oh, they're yeah. a fun fight, yeah. for sure. Well, I've never caught them. My neighbor has. He hates ketchup because <laughs> he said they're really bloody. They're a fun fight, but he said, he'll and give it, it to me to grill like, up. Uh, yeah. yeah, I fished around the Bay Bridge a couple Good times job, and. Uh, the key key bridge i fished there a couple times but uh i actually got second place in a tournament down at the bay bridge two years ago it was a kayak only tournament yeah for a tiny little bluefish and uh (laughs) it's just nobody 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 else was catching and uh it was funny because we went out we you know you launch at like seven or something like that and uh i'd fished the bay bridge before in a boat and i know that they have that like center rock pile where the the uh cables come up out of the ground the supporting mm-hmm. right. cables right. and i've always done really well there so of course i'm that's where i'm heading and that don don came with me and we were the only ones that really caught any fish that day and we got we we hit the time window perfect we got in there and it wasn't windy <coughs> and set up and we're catching fish and mm-hmm. then it started getting nasty out well right there you have that big huge concrete piling that goes all the way up to the top of the bridge so you kind of you could hide behind it and uh, we did good out there. Don, I can't remember what place Don got. He did good in it, too. Fourth? Hmm. Yeah, was it, yeah, okay. So. It was fourth. I Wait a minute, you guys second from a little... I know. From a Look, tiny little bluefish. It was like a 13 and a half He got fourth. What, did he catch a worm? <laughs> he was catching... Uh, <laughs> white he was catching white... No, did he catch white Crunkers birds? or spot? He was catching... Maybe. I think he caught striper. Oh, okay. was, he caught a striper. Hmm. What's the biggest thing you guys are hitting up at the Susquehanna? Fish? Yeah. Stripers. Stripers. Yeah, yeah, that's the biggest fish. Depends on time of year. <laughs> well, it's full stripers and flathead shark. catfish. Stripers yeah, the flathead flat catfish. catfish are getting crazy. Oh, he had a 40, is everybody, anybody ever hooked pounder? a bull shark in the upper oh, bay? Yeah. Blue? No, I never yeah. have. I've heard of them being caught down at like Carpenter's Point and yeah. you know, yeah. Turkey yeah. Point. Oh, the bull sharks? Yeah. yeah. Whenever I get broke off or anything, I always just. You blame it on the bull shark. I blame it on the bull shark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sturgeon there's or something. There's big blue catfish in there too now. Mm-hmm. I, I got a 44 pounder last year. Ooh. The blue cats are the uh, invasive ones. Oh, that they eat everything. Yeah, blue yeah, cats and flatheads flat are, are even really worse bad. They eat smallmouth bass. You know, full grown smallmouth bass. And you figure these things down. are, I mean, huge. Their mouths, yeah, yeah. And they just bigger gorge. than their face. Right? I love yeah. blue catfish. <laughs> they yeah, blue, blue cats are. Used to be my favorite fish to eat until I tried the cow nose ray. And then until I'm you tried the snakehead. Have you tried a flathead? They're pretty. I'm not sure if I they're pretty good. Mind. They eat. They mostly, well, most of the catfish up there eat live fish is what they eat. Right. Human. A lot of people don't realize. I think the only thing I've had was, well, is what we call down here, which is, your, you know, your regular channel cats. Mm-hmm. That's about the only, th- I think that's the only catfish I ever had. I don't know what they saw in the stores, but. Flatheads are pretty good. Yeah. i have to try it. No, yeah, what do they sell in the store? Like, what kind of catfish? It's got to be blue cats. Probably blue. Yeah. Blue cats are huge. That's true. But, so, you know, flatheads get big, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they're farmer. Well, a lot of the farmers' farm catfish raised. I see is, are channel yeah, catfish. Yeah. Yeah. Would you eat farm-raised fish? I don't anymore. I don't really buy okay. fish anymore. I usually have some in stock. So. <laughs> keep them in stock. Yeah, yeah. in stock. <laughs> I, have, I keep a lot of walleye from Deep Creek while I'm out at Frostburg. It helps with my food costs. I usually, you know, I probably kept ten last semester, ten in four months, but. Yeah, that's guess where we're going for a cookout. Yeah, <laughs> it's, good way it's, to go. Yeah. Deep Creek Lake's awesome for walleye fishing. They're not huge, but you catch ten or fifteen in a night. Nice. I usually I night fish for them. I never really catch them well during the day, but I'll stand out on, under the on the banks of Deep Creek at like one in the morning, 
and they're usually turned on at like two or three in the morning. Mm. It was so. like the year of the walleye this this Ooh. year. Got you, my personal every, best. I'd say yeah. Me and Chris both got personal yeah. best walleyes this nice. year. Josh, how much? Josh lost one, <laughs> <laughs> and then I caught it. <laughs> oh man, you just have nothing but bad luck, don't I, you? I lost a huge walleye. Like, I still he, he was looking at it for a while. Them. I don't know what he was looking at it for, but. <laughs> <laughs> He, he was saying, go ahead. You Blame it on the net, man. <laughs> Somebody goes to net it, and they, they go to grab this net that don't even reach the water. Uh-huh. Like, How can a net not reach the water? You're in a kayak. No, no, no we, we were, were on a wharf. Yeah, we were up oh. at the dam. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. 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 So it's like a, what, seven foot, eight foot? It depends on the water, yeah. 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 About, but. I've, swung, I've swung him up over there before. He was just sitting there waiting. You know, we, we saw the fish. It was a nice walleye. And, uh, I thought it was he was a just rock sitting fish. there waiting, and yeah. it just it finally... You know, shook the hook. Yeah. It was terrible. For Josh. I was walking it to the steps, and somebody's like, wait, here's a net. Mm-hmm. So I caught one, like, <laughs> literally, like, five seconds after that, and I just walked it to the steps. <laughs> but yeah. that didn't make your day, did it? Yeah. <laughs> I caught some more, so it worked out. Yeah, you caught a couple after that, at least. Yeah. I was happy with just the one big one. Now, you guys did a, mainly live bait or lures or what? I, I'm i mostly an artificial. I mean, artificial, artificial for sure. Well, I'd like to get into live bait. <laughs> well, I get lazy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just it, like, uh, it just depends. Yellow on perch is a live bait. Yeah. Usually. I get lazy. I just take a stick of dynamite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right, like, uh, right. Cast net them or something. Yeah. Like, all right. <laughs> My grandfather uses a lot of live bait in his pond. He's got monster. 10 to 15 pound largemouth and 30 pound channel cats. Nice. He's, he's been feeding them for 15, 20 years. It's like Tennessee or something, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Four, five pound bluegill and crappie. I mean, huge panfish. Wow. He uses a lot of live bait. He'll, he'll use like a 10 inch bluegill for the <laughs> bass and he'll catch like a six to eight pound bass and he'll have bigger bass come up and try to eat it. Holy cow. Sick. He had, he had, uh, his first muskie, what was it, last year? On a crappie. Yeah, yeah on a crappie. Huh. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. I don't like it. I don't use live bait that much, but I, I want to. It's fun. It looks cool, yeah. It's fun. You just throw it out. Watch. Chill. So you can see the I bird usually do one of each. See, see I'll, I'll do one of each. I'll yeah. let something sit, mm-hmm. and especially and in the spring. Gym, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah once true. rockfish season starts, we're out there letting the eel soak and then yeah. throwing lures. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> friend of mine loves going rock fishing and he went this year was so upset because he didn't catch nothing yeah it was Not this year has been, he, been said, he blames it on the banana because somebody took a banana <laughs> <rice fruit. laughs> yep. this year. We, we did good at the beginning of june we were catching our limited rock fish almost every time we went and then it just shut down once the summer heat came right mm-hmm. but you just had to go enough to get them and it was all at night we were catching them at you know 10 o'clock wow Mm-hmm. Is there a limit? I mean, is there, there are you? Because I know you know if you launch from a park, supposedly some parks close at a certain time or whatever. Mm-hmm. But if you're out there on the water, can you be out there at any time? Mm-hmm. You can't keep yeah. them after twelve. Yeah, twelve, after 12. 12 and five. Twelve, 12, 12 and five, 12 and 5 okay. for rockfish. You can't keep them. What about you I mean? What about fishing in general? Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you can be out there twenty four seven if you yeah. want. Yeah. Like Susquehanna State Park, you can be there all night as long as you're actively fishing. That's what the signs say. But Rock State Park and other ones that they close at sunset and they'll kick you out if you're fishing or not fishing. The dam used to be open twenty four seven before nine eleven. Mm-hmm. Wow. The yeah. catwalk was open all night. It was a killer wall awesome. fishing. Did you ever fish the catwalk? Fi- no, no, I would love to fish at the dam at night. So Josh is the only one that got yeah, to fish the catwalk. The only one that ever did. He was there in his little baby carriage. Yeah. His dad just sets him down. And <laughs> <laughs> That's where I got my first rockfish. I think I was 12. Nice. What are you 20 15, years ago. 15 now? Jeez. 12 to 15 in 20 God. years. Huh? Now they yell at you if you get close to it. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, yeah, which is funny because you can go right up river to Safe Harbor and fish right off the. Yeah, I'd like to try that one this year, this spring. Yeah. Safe Harbor out there. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a dam above. Two dams up. Or two, two dams. Dam. Oh, oh, that's a pretty good wall. Yeah, yeah. Spot, well, then you got Safe Harbor. Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah, it's the, the inconsistency in security is a little baffling. Yeah, I don't know. There's like yeah. there's some weird uh, like 
like I won't get into it. Yeah, I was gonna, <laughs> that's exactly what I was about to say. Don't get Josh started. There's like some like conspiracy theorists. Like, with the yeah, 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 it's, yeah. it's weird. I mean, it's, I'm sure it's all, in, you know, when it comes down to it, it's all money based. Yep. Well, let's hear Corp- some. Corporation. I won't bring it up. <laughs> you don't want to hear me bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> kind of wingo, uh, the catwalk was our go-to when I was in high school. We yeah, went up there uh, quite a bit. And, uh, yeah, my dad did a lot of it, a lot of fishing yeah. off of that catwalk. We get the, uh, the, the 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 big seller up there was the carp. If we caught those, because nobody eats carp, but there were there were people pay you for it. Yeah, mm-hmm. you pull yeah. them up. Say, if it's cooked right, it's good. Yeah, yeah. give you ten, fifteen bucks for that. Mm-hmm. So made the trip worthwhile. I actually went catfishing a couple weeks ago down in uh, D.C., and oh, we I used carp for bait. Yeah. We didn't catch anything, but <laughs> <laughs> in theory, he had pictures to say it worked. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I need to go do that. I think the greatest success I ever had with catfish, the bait I used was dough balls. Dough balls. Yeah. yeah. For a catfish or a carp? For catfish. Really? Yeah. So, well, dough balls with blood. Huh. And I would nail catfish because I, like I said, I love catfish. And when I would go fishing in Marin or wherever, that's usually what I would fish for. Whenever I try a dough ball, it just comes off the hook. <laughs> no, no, yeah. no. Never had luck with that. <laughs> no. Yeah. Shredded wheat. Just cast it. Shredded wheat. It hits the water and it, it dissolved off the yeah. hook in five minutes. And I'm like, well, that was a jump. <laughs> when I was a kid, we would take shredded wheat and Kool-Aid mix. Cherry. Oh, you were serious about Cherry. shredded wheat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Cherry or strawberry Kool Aid and make our own dough balls for carp. Hmm. And it was killer, man. You'd catch 40, 50 pound carp. They float? Or no? I don't know. I never. No. You never even used it. You don't know. You throw it out in a bowl. Well, I mean, I, I'm throwing out of a bowl and a spoon and milk so he's breakfast. Of, yeah. Yeah. I'm throwing in 20 foot of water. I, mean, oh, okay. I don't know. The ball didn't it, float, though. Like I was using a top. weight. Okay. So, yeah. You don't. I got you. Carp you aren't, aren't up top. They'll hit, they'll hit the top. That's how people fly fish. For well, them. yeah. But they use little mulberry flies. Look like a mulberry under a mulberry tree. It's funny, fish like in Europe, like carp fishing is like a yeah. big deal. Mm. Like that's Especially like their, in Europe. Oh, yeah, it's like the renowned fish for them. My the cousins carp, live yeah. over yeah. there in England. And I mean, some of the pictures they post big ones of all 50, yeah. 60 pound carp. This mirror carp looked cool. I was going to say the mirror with the big oh, all scales. All the fish they catch over They're there. Yeah, I mean, just monsters. Yeah. The, the whales catfish. I've never seen one. The whales yeah. catfish, yeah. Wells. Well, That's a okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, no, the carp, <laughs> carp was like eating mud. It's I know, they have yeah. a mud vein in them is what I've heard. Yeah, yeah, some kind of vein. Just tried it one time when I was a kid and I was nope. I'll do it again. They're stanky. Yeah. I don't know if it's true. All right, so you guys put it on, on the tournaments, not other places. In other words, let's say if we went to do a tournament down here, but have you guys do it? Yeah, we could do we, it. I mean, we, you would just have to set it up. Okay. Get the permit. Yeah, you'd have to get a permit, permit. for it. Um, we most, mostly do the black bass just because it's easier to get the permit for it. Right. Um, you yeah, can do. It's hard for a stripe. You can get a striped bass one, but, yeah, it's a little more detailed. I, I don't really get know. permit from DNR? Just, yeah, DNR. Okay. Don is actually uh, pretty pretty good with DNR. He's in their back pocket, if you will. He he knows those guys pretty well. Mm-hmm. They just had they gave him an award last year. I can't remember what it bass was. Bass conservation. Bass, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, it was some kind of black bass we conservation. All, he had us all take a little test for catch and release. The club and, members. Uh, yeah. yeah, and then DNR hooked us up. We got a bunch of bump bump boards and. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple well, of that's, and that's why I was asking about the nonprofit part in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Because if you know, if you guys got that five hundred one c three, you know, for everything you you do out there, you could probably I, I would think be able to get grants to absolutely to help stuff. It's easier than yeah. yeah. Yeah, if we can get grants to start doing research, I would come back and work here doing bass research and stuff on the river. But that'd be awesome. There's a lot of there's already a lot of research done on it, and more. The arm cares a lot more about trout recently than warm water species. Well, aren't, aren't trout, they're doing better now, yeah? Yeah, in Maryland, the trout have come back pretty good, the brook trout. Huh. In Western Maryland, they declared the Castleman River watershed, I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's a, the Castleman River is a famous river out in Western Maryland for stock rainbow trout fishing. But they finally declared that the brook trout have returned to the streams around, the, around there. Hmm. So huh. That's pretty cool. I um, Lou's big into, big into yeah, trout. T- tell yeah. about your trip that you took, Lou. Yeah, well, I hope to get my guide license soon, but um, this past summer I took a just a solo trip to the Catskills Park in New York. I um, I showed up in Roscoe, New York, 
aka Trout Town on Wednesday afternoon. Trout Town. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. They have it on the signs. It's also known as Trout Town, in the USA. I was oh cool. <laughs> I'm in the right place. So um, I got my fishing license and I asked the guy at the fly shop, hey, where can I go catch a few fish before it gets dark? And they sent me to this stream called Russell Brook and I fished it and I caught a brook or brown and a rainbow trout. My first hour of being there, I caught 20 more. And then I had to find a place to camp, so I found this map at the trailhead, and they said there was a wooden lean-to, like three miles into the woods, around the other side, so I drove around to that, and I hiked to the lean, hiked three miles to the lean-to, it got dark right when I got there, just camped out in the middle of nowhere on this lake, it was a beautiful spot. Nice. All but, by um, himself, too. Yeah, like, it was so a, cool. The first <laughs> night was a little sketchy, I thought I was going to get eaten by a Sasquatch. Because <laughs> <laughs> three hours before when I was fishing, I was walking back, and I was walking along the trail off the creek, walking back to my car, and I look up in this meadow, and there's this wooden teepee structure up in the meadow, and I was like, what the heck is that? So I started walking towards it, I got about halfway, and there's it this moved. dead animal head stuck to the top of it. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> I'm disgusting. going. <laughs> it was weird. It, it looked like a llama or a dog head. <gasps> Oh, wow. I didn't. I, w- I didn't get too much closer to it, but um, <laughs> I, I was taking a picture with my phone or my whatever camera I had with me, and I accidentally hit the video button, and you could hear me like, "Oh nope, f that, I'm leaving." <laughs> <laughs> and you could hear me on it. I didn't post that one, but yeah. And then the rest of the days, I would just fish different creeks, and I never knew where I would camp for the night until like four o'clock in the afternoon. But um, usually I just came, was got lucky and found a spot immediately, and it was fun. I don't think I've ever tried trout. It's fun. To fish? Yeah. For fish? Oh, yeah. I, I caught my first one this yeah, year with Lou, actually. I took him out on yeah. a uh, little Hartford County brown trout trip. He did pretty good. I, I was going to ask you, where where's the best place, or where do you go around Hartford County for trout? So they stock Deer Creek, Rock State Park. They stock that with rainbow okay. trout in the fall and in the spring. In the spring, they have a closure period. It's closed from March 1st until the last Saturday of March. Mm-hmm. When okay. opening last Saturday of March is opening day for trout season in Maryland, um, you're which is crazy. Fish. It's shoulder to shoulder, 100 fishermen in a stream, and then after wow. those, after that day, everyone's done. So it's fine, you know. You get the whole river to yourself after that day. But um, well, the fish are gone, but you get the whole river. No, there's there's plenty of fish in <laughs> yes. those creeks. They stock they stock Deer Creek with the most fish in Maryland. Like Deer Creek gets the most rainbow trout in Do Maryland. Really? Yes. It gets almost 10,000. But, um, wow. The cool thing about trout fishing, though, is you like yeah. you get to walk and you get to yeah. see nature. Yeah. It's not, it's you know, more I really of a, enjoyed it's, it. It compared, like, it's as active as kayak fishing, but walking. Because yeah, you know, well, didn't they used to say spot. little gunpowder? Little gunpowder. Gun powder, uh, yeah, the big gunpowder is full of brown trout. There's yeah. a catch and release section. I took Darwin from um, Pretty Boy Reservoir, the dam there, right. seven miles down to Bluemont Road. <laughs> it's, uh, catch and release flies and artificial lures only. Yeah. And then after Bluemont Road, it's a two per day artificial only, and then after that, it's stocked five a day. What you can use bait or whatever you want. Yeah, but still, um, still touted as one of the best in the country. That area, mm-hmm. yeah. it's really? Like yeah. I think I've read it was number ten in the country. Yeah, people come from Europe to fish it. There's all sorts of fly shops around there. Yeah. Backwater angler is a big one, but um, it's not that great. It gets pressured, uh, really high pressured, and then the the dam this year has been running a lot of water we had that problem there was way too much water running when um we went but you guys still but thought, still yeah. i still got one yeah. there and then we i, I have I, 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 mainly, I mainly fish little private streams in harford <laughs> county. any stream you know the size of this table in northern harford county is probably going to have brown trout so man do you make your own flies no that's a little i tried that a few years ago and it's a little too small and intricate for me Okay. I'd rather just buy them a dollar fifty a fly than spend an hour. Stick with, we'll stick with making the custom rods. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't Walden rods. I, I tried to make a fly. I tried to make some woolly buggers, the easiest one to tie, and they were. Mm, they did not do good. <laughs> they, they, they were buggers, but it wasn't woolly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. My my favorite thing is wild trout fishing. I have. Hopefully, I have a job lined up in Utah for this summer, working on the Green wow. River, doing trout research and invasive species removal. I applied for um, some jobs in Alaska at salmon hatcheries, some jobs in Idaho at trout research facilities and hatcheries, um, a brook trout restoration job in New Hampshire I applied for. Um, Living the dream. Yeah. yeah. I have an interview for the one in Utah on the Green River this this Friday. But awesome. Man. The first I'm going to Utah. <laughs> So how about dispelling a myth? Because I saw this 
couple of weeks ago or so on Facebook. Mm-hmm. The speaking of stocking fish, when they do airdrops. Uh, oh, <laughs> that's okay. fine. It doesn't it, harm. Doesn't. I think it it's, it'll you, stun a few if a few of them are going to yeah, die. But right. there's no other way to stock them in these lakes that are so remote. Right. But I well, also don't trying. agree with stocking fish over yeah. native fish. That's yeah. one of my biggest arguments with people is is why stock rainbow trout from the, the west coast. They, that's where they originate. Rainbow, rainbow trout are from the west coast. Brook trout are from the Appalachian Mountains, and brown trout are from Europe. They're invasive okay. altogether. So they're still right. invasive. They're, they're more invasive than snakeheads. They're, really? They're honestly brown trout are worse than snakeheads for the ecosystem. But huh. people people like them, so that's why they. They're fit. not as ugly. They're not as ugly. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. But um, and Maryland stocks rainbow trout over brook trout in western Maryland. Over native brook trout, they'll put rainbow trout in the same river. I don't. I do not agree with that because they'll eat the rain, they'll eat the brook trout, eat their eggs, and compete for food. So when I'm, once I'm done Bang. getting experience with um, fisheries biology for the next five years, I'm probably going to come back and fight that. And get that. Good idea. What's the reason behind that? Do you know or reason why they stock it? Yeah, are they hardier fish or, or they stock rain, rainbow trout are hardier fish. They're easy to grow. They don't stock brook trout because they're afraid. Of the gene gene genetic drift, they're afraid of introducing different um, brook trout strains. genetics and strains that aren't right. normal. Um, but I don't understand that either. Pennsylvania does a lot of stocking over fish too, but um, I just don't understand why they can't manage the water for the brook trout in a way that it's a sustainable fishery instead of stocking it. But they mm-hmm. stocked brook trout too. I don't know. But they don't know. reproduce either. None of the most of the fish the state stocks doesn't don't reproduce. They usually stock females only. Um, but yeah. So what is it the DNR that actually stocks them? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, in Pennsylvania, I don't think much of it happens in Maryland. But in Pennsylvania, there's also a lot of clubs that stock. They they'll stock. They you get, can volunteer you know. too. I see yeah. a lot of guys volunteer. My brother-in-law does it, mm-hmm. and um, I don't know if it's PA or. I volunteer with Maryland. Maryland. He, they, him, and my nephew got in a float, and they would go in a tube, and they would That's drop PA. them in different. Yeah, yeah. P- Maryland doesn't also doesn't do float stocking. The PA will do. They'll dump. They'll dump a bunch of trout in a basket, and then they'll right. walk down the river and put them down, and they'll put eat, put a net full of trout in each spot. But in Maryland, they find a bridge and dump. It. <laughs> uh, this looks like a good place here, guys. Yeah, <laughs> hit the bucket. Yeah, I, I was fishing out in western Maryland. They had said they stocked the river the day before. I was like, oh, I'll go get some trout for the for the freezer. I fished all sorts of spots from the river, and I didn't catch any. I got to this last spot, and it's like the most popular spot, and I caught ninety. Jeez, in one spot. Wow. Was, you know, just where they don't. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. They said they put five hundred fish in, and they must have put them all in this one spot, but. The wow. other thing people don't realize about trout is how um, how soft and uh, delicate. Yeah, delicate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was the word. <laughs> yeah, I and see delicate a lot of, they are. A lot of pictures of people on Facebook like lipping a trout like a bass and stuff like that'll break their jaw. Yeah. You got to wet your hands before you touch them. They're delicate fish. Really? You, you only want to keep them out of the water for a minute tops, thirty seconds. Hmm. Wow. They, uh, it's just because they require such cold oxygenated water that um. They can get stressed out. I got the run so down on it when I went fishing with them a couple of yeah. weeks. So. Yeah. <laughs> Thought it'd be worse. You gotta get you gotta get on your hands and knees and wet your hands and take care of the fish. But as long it's as you take care of them, fish. they'll be they'll be there forever. Yeah. Now, you ever do any fly fishing from the kayaks? I have on the river. Yeah, yeah. yeah. fly yeah. fishing from kayak is fun. I um I got a ten weight I tried on the river last year. Big salmon fly rod. I didn't catch anything on it, but I was able to wing the flies pretty far. But um. Okay, yeah. but that would be. You didn't flip yours when you were doing it, did you? <laughs> okay. I got a beautiful picture when I was doing it too, but I caught a lot of crappy and mm-hmm. I lost a nice bass. Yeah, that was yeah. It was in a reservoir. <laughs> he went to find that walleye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they love flies. I do. I'll do fly fishing if I'm feeling like a challenge. Right. But usually, I get fed up like getting stuck in a tree and go right back to my spinning rod. I was in Chesapeake. That's where I was doing it. Nice. It was a nice day. I need to get a kayak. Yeah, man, you should get one. Mm-hmm. They're a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. It's nice because if it floats, you can use yeah. it. Yeah. 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 It's not like a boat. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. If you keep the drain plugs yeah. in it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely yeah. keep the drain plugs yeah. in it. And it's so mobile. You can go anywhere in the country with your kayak and yeah. fish any lake you want. In you Maryland, want. they don't. You don't. You know, as long as they're not motorized, you, you're not required to be registered. Mm-hmm. 
So. I was going to ask you about yeah. that. Yeah. Once you motorize them, then you have to register. I still have to figure that. Even if it's out. a trolling motor. Yeah, Even, yeah, yeah. yeah any kind really? of outboard. Uh, about to order a motor. Mm. Propulsion, we'll say. I'll let you know how mine works. Are you doing so, like, what, the pedals, that you're fine. You don't have to register. But any, yeah, any motor. All right, how does that work with the pedals? Because, I mean, sure I know, you know, you have yours, you're... You can steer. Gonna make it side heavy. So, oh well, they just have a rudder. Yeah, so you have a you pedal little, underneath. Little, you have fins that are flipping to push you forward and back, and then you have the rudder on the back, and mm-hmm. and you have a little cable or okay, so handle. Hand yeah. yeah, that's how you get yeah. the cable to the rudder. His never goes down. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what's that? His My, never goes my down rudder. Half the time. Yeah, I gotta keep pulling it. And what's yours? Like? Yours isn't pedaled, is it? No. 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 You have a kayak? Yeah. What kind? Uh, hell, I forget now. It's been sit on top? No, it's a sit-in. Um, Sometimes sit-ins are better. What the heck is it? Especially for, like, kayak and it's small water, like Deer Creek and stuff like yes, that. Yes, it's a wilderness. I wouldn't want to take I'm trying to think of the vibe model. down the Deer Creek, but I did it in Fair Hill at so. I I I got a buddy of mine. He's an older me. guy, and he has a set in bottom. Every and he just freaking murders it in the thing. Like he catches fish. <laughs> you catch more fish than I do. And he goes out in the dead of winter in it. Like oh, he's I, he's just he's hardcore. Who's that? This guy I met. His name's uh, he's buddies with Bruce Keelman, which is I don't you know him. He works at Bass Pro. I met your buddy his, buddy, the other day. his buddy's name's Scott, and I was just telling him that he's got a sit in. And he just murders it. I mean, he just slays fish right yeah. and left. Dude. He's out in the middle of winter, you know. Yep. Just tiny little sit-in. I, I did it. my old kayak that I used to have. Um, I did. I'd set up a fishing, uh, two fishing holders on it, uh, rod holders. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I'm not not into it like you guys are, but I'd, I'd go out once in a while and, and fish. Um, it's fun. I mean, I'm not. I can go out there and catch nothing all day, and I'll be happy. Oh, yeah. just, just, just be happy. It's like an adventure the experience. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but this one, I haven't. This one is. I just got this past summer. I got back into it, so just take it out and paddle around. around and, mm-hmm. yeah. Have you ever been up to like northeast or anything? Um, northeast, no. Uh, been over by the Sydney Canal. Oh, okay. Um, Do you go in the canal? Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> well, no, no, I don't think I did what you did and go all the way up and under the bridges and. Yeah, so no. we don't. We've, we've gone out. I, I went out there. Mainly the basin. Yeah, the basin and yeah. stuff. But okay. The canal, that place gets. That water rips. Yeah. That water rips. <laughs> that water rips. I might have to look because I was thinking of recommending you guys and my nephew and his buddy and. Going up there, but if you think it's that dangerous, maybe we'll rethink it can, that. It can be. It, yeah. The C and D canal can get can get pretty crazy. I mean, I'm, I'm so not an I, expert. I would, just do, a, I would, I would uh, say north. Weekend. I love northeast yeah. just for because yeah. it's you have a park. It's a soft launch you can do there. You have a bunch of nature. Um, if you're just going to go around, you can see a bunch of different birds and. You get to see a lot of different things. I, I, that's what I like about Northeast. Yeah. Maybe a snakehead. Maybe a snakehead. <laughs> Yeah, been to um, Elk Neck. Um, oh, okay. Taking it off there. As yeah. a matter of fact, when I first got my first one, we went up to the beach up there, and I took it out, and uh, one of these huge cargo ships was coming down. Oh. And you know the the wake that they when oh, they pull yeah. in, and then the wake comes Sounds back out. Up. Well, I went up like this, and I thought, <laughs> and it's only like two feet deep, but I didn't know it. But I went up <laughs> like this on the wake, like that. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. That's what, yeah. like, I mean, uh, we have to be safe and everything, but when those ships come through, that's it's, a lot of, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I love, I <laughs> we all, we all like, wait around, and when they go by, we all just go real quick trying to <laughs> go over them. Yeah. <laughs> we were out on the river was doing a float trip. We floated from the dam towards to Lapidum one day, and it, at the last, like, Eighth of, a, eighth of a stretch, it got insanely windy. The wind. It was, was a blowing, south wind. Yeah. Yeah. The wind was blowing up the river. It completely stopped the we river. Had to paddle again, <laughs> just to get oh, it down. Yeah. It was crazy. It was good exercise. Crazy. And we got down to the calmer water near Lapham, and it was probably two foot, through two and a half Dude, foot was, roller waves. That yeah. was that was during uh, striper research. Uh huh. That was during a, a club event, the striper research event that our club does. But um. <laughs> So you do re- not just tournaments, but yep. also research yeah. events. Yeah, yeah. with iAngler, we take a picture. During those events, we take a picture of the fish, and Don will collect them all at the end of the day and send them off to DNR with all the measurement data. 
and they'll use them for population estimates and stuff like that. Cool. Great. If we could tag them too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, we could. You can tag them. Yeah. yeah. They have a program now where they send you all the tagging yeah. equipment. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, hopefully that'll be part of my job when I go to Utah is tagging cutthroat trout. It so. seems like this year we were talking about the uh, the the fish. It seems like this year that it's been a really big decline in the big rock Striper, fish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of, in the river, a lot of people did really good up north. On like, it seems like they almost skipped the chest the the Chesapeake, or they were only in they were in and out because they they breed there in the spring. But the guys up north, Montauk Point, Maine, right? Stuff yeah, like yeah. That, they in the Chesapeake Bay, though, know, it's the what is it? What's the canal in Massachusetts? Oh, uh, well, Cape Cod. Cape, Cape Cod, Cod Canal yeah, was Cape Cod on was, fire this year. It they was were, pretty good. There was a, they had a good mackerel run in August and September. And it's because all the fish like, wanted to get away from the debris down yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's a lot. They, yeah, they kind of just shot right. I think they just shot right up there this year after they were done in the bay. I follow enough of the boating guys on Facebook that they right. kind of get their uh, their opinions on it, and it you know it seems like this year was all for them in the Chesapeake. Mm-hmm. But that kind of brings fish. us, mm-hmm. they're trying to, you know, get away from keeping those large female mm-hmm. fish because yeah. they're the breeders, and that's what's going to bring the generations of fish. Yeah. Right. You know, some of these big fish are 30, 40 years old. They should have a slot limit, nothing over like 36 or 40 inches. To be kept. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They did that in Virginia for the redfish, and they're like Thriving. doubled in numbers yeah. right now. So. You know, hopefully, you know, DNR will, you know, recognize that and take the steps necessary to, to protect the fish. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. biggest yeah. issue is, contr- uh, is um, commercial. It's not recreation fishermen. It's the commercial fishermen that are allowed to keep them for, like, longer in West... They're allowed to keep them... The season longer in Virginia, and then they can keep them right at the mouth of the bay as they're coming in. But, um, huh. yeah, it's... I don't think it's anything... The, the recreational fishermen have a little bit of an impact, but it's mainly commercial. In my opinion. And then you got a few poachers. That's about it. Poachers are definitely a issue. Yeah, tell them about the guy. A couple bit. hundred pounds of fillets of mm-hmm. stripers that he had above the catch and release line. Whoa. Yeah, I've, oh, yeah, I've witnessed some bad poaching in oh, yeah. the spring up at the Susquehanna. They they employ uh, the sheriff's office with drones now. DNR worked with them. They have drones now, like cameras, 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 cameras that mean, out on the river. Night vision. They'll Night stick vision. out. They'll Poaching's stick that bad? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we'd just say it was 100 pounds. Over 100. They yeah. caught a guy, a kayaker, that was catching fish below the line and then taking them up to that uh, island right Filleting there. Filleting them right throughout the Cutting night right and then there. hiding them in huh. his kayak. 100 we pounds of fillets. We were probably when he was doing, doing that. Yeah. Wow. So, we were probably out laughing when he was <laughs> And his reasoning was because he works during... You know the the season when you can't catch them. And what do they do? Just give them a fine? <laughs> yeah. It's, See, that's the problem. It's they a slap on the wrist. Nothing. They might take really? your they might take your license or something for six for months. But if he's months. poaching, why does he care? Yeah, he doesn't care. He doesn't care if he has a license. Yeah. It I just think makes they, it they, tougher. They, for they not yeah. strict enough. Yeah, yeah it's just made like fifty fines. grand or something yeah. like that. And now just the talk him. is about moving the line below to the ninety five bridge. Instead of because right now where there's the line, there's these rocks out in the middle of the river. They call them twin rocks. Right. And it goes from the rocks to the jetty wall over on Port Deposit, and then from the rocks to I'm not sure exactly top of Lapidum. the top yeah, point, top the top point of Lapidum. Like so that's your you can't target striper past that line up above stripe. it. You can't. Above, up, yeah. I'm sorry, up you river of the line. It. But now they're trying to break that, move that from there back to the 95 right, bridge, which would suck. Yeah, I mean it would it would destroy it for kayaking. Yeah, it would. I but mean, it pretty much. I don't think they're going to move it for enforcement. You know, enforcement or like this year it's staying ease. the same. I found out the other night from Kayla. Mm-hmm. It is yeah. staying the same so far, so we'll see. Yeah, they had a meeting, you know, and a bunch of kayakers showed up to it and expressed their opinions on it. So hopefully. And the kayakers just want to go catch fish. I think it should stay the same. But it's tough. Like I said, if you move that, that line in 95, that's going to knock oh, out yeah, the yeah, kayaking. Yeah. I mean, that's a good, what, three miles maybe, four miles from Lapidum? What, the 95 the bridge? 95 yeah, bridge, it, it yeah. should stay the same. A lot of these fishermen don't understand the, the fisheries biologist stuff about it. So that have hooking these fish abo- up after the deep water messes their eggs up. They'll, they'll swim away, but they'll drop their eggs. The eggs will die right when, like, after all the stress of catching them. Right. So, wow. Yeah. I used to want to catch them, you know, in the spring and, like, off where the dialing line stuff is, and I, I wouldn't do it. Do you guys go out and teach, like, classes to people on this stuff? No, we, yeah, we, we all talk about it when we link up fishing. It's, it's mostly what, like, it's like the community they were talking about. 
Like, like I think that'd be a good idea, though. It. Yeah, you got Because, you know, I was uneducated before, and I went on charters and kept, you know, nice trophy size fish yeah. that mm-hmm. now I wouldn't keep. Right. You know, and, it's just yeah. you learn. And there's guys DNR does, DNR does, people think they don't know best, but they definitely do know what they're talking about when they set the regulations. Yeah. But, um, but the thing a, is, that's the type of thing you can get grants for if you yeah. guys mm-hmm. get serious about that. Yeah. Because I think if you guys would go out and do it, and say somebody from DNR doing it, I think. Mm-hmm. People would listen to you more, definitely, because you're out sure. there. Doing well, you're not it all that the authoritative time. figure. You're exactly. Not, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's. <clears throat> yeah, Don's got to get that 501 C3 set up. Yeah. Well, and Don and I are kind of the business end of the thing. Don's obviously the owner, right? And I'm kind of his per se partner, and we we've discussed that a couple of times before. I was going to do it, and then I just got busy with spring and didn't didn't get to it. But that's in the works. Um, I think we're still going to keep the LLC. Well, yeah, because you can always do, do the, a nonprofit under it. Yeah, yeah, and just do the nonprofit. You know, I'd, like you said, that'd be easier for grants and just like a fish, fish foundation or something. Mm-hmm. That just didn't sound right. Fish, fish foundation. foundation. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds good. So, Susquehanna <laughs> River Fish Foundation. Yeah, it's got a ring to it. Mm-hmm. Actually, I would just get rid of that. Get rid of the Susquehanna, because you have the Susquehanna River Fish Foundation, and people think that's what you're focused on. Yeah. But you guys go everywhere. And I think that's kind of what holds us back in general, is we tried to expand the club and move down towards Baltimore, even up towards, you know, up further on the Susquehanna. Even mm-hmm. D.C. But it's like, yeah, it's the Susquehanna River Fishing Club. So yeah. it kind of limits you, you know, I think people's it feels perception of it. It feels a good spot. There's There's tons of clubs yeah, and that's the thing with Facebook. There's clubs everywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, Every but, region has a fishing Oh, club. yeah, no, no, no. I'm not, I'm not talking about don't change the name of the club. Mm-hmm. But if you start a 501c3, have a different name under it. Right. You know, because yeah, because that way it... Get it, it broader. It, broader. Yeah. yeah. You know, you can focus more everywhere. You know, whether you call it... I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> right. No, that makes sense to me. Keep, keep it, keeping the fish alive. Mm-hmm. Fish in Maryland waters. waters. Yeah, right. I, I mean, there's so, so many things. Because, I mean, we all, I mean, we had, what was it, last year, the big fish killed down here? Or two years ago. Yeah, two years ago, yeah. Which I don't think they ever did say what caused it. Yeah, I read, like, algae bloom. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 I follow that guy, Scott Sewell, on Facebook, and he seems. And apparently it wasn't just was, this area. It was yeah. all the way over to, I think, was it? Dundalk or Mill I was saying right now about bird, like Bird River. Yeah, yeah Bird River. Yeah, all the way across Bird River and then down. Yeah, it, yeah. The algae bloom was the consensus, but you know, you're right. A lot of people question that. I mean, I saw it hiking up and down the gunpowders. It was really bad last two years ago, um, but that doesn't explain downriver. You know, into the right. bay and and. Uh, what well, have you guys seen the algae bloom that happened down in uh, Florida? The red, oh, the, the red, red tide, tide yeah, yeah, coming out of uh, terrible. Okeechobee. Okeechobee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, that's that just kind of shows you what you know, mankind, and mm-hmm. you know, you're thinking you're you're doing this to help, mm-hmm. and then something like that happens. Right, you're it's totally really altering. Uh, we destroyed the waterways in Florida when we developed that. Everything was channelized. We learned a lot about. But that it's you know, it goes back to say it's all about that dollar. Yep. You know, the sh- the sugar yeah. business. You it, know, it was sugar for yeah. sure. Mm-hmm. Big sugar. Um, yeah. But what do you do, you know? Not have sugar? <laughs> <laughs> it's tough, man. It is, that's, a, that's a double-edged sword for sure. There's definitely more <clears throat> conservative well, sweet teeth and fish out yeah. there, though, huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, they, they got – and, you know, it's been happening down there for years, but with, uh, with Facebook and social so, media, yeah. it really came to forefront because yeah. people are focused on it. So. Yeah, the other, the other problem down there too, around there is, is development, simple development. They're they're development like anywhere else. It, they're allowing things too close to the water. Mm-hmm. The watersheds are being destroyed. Mm-hmm. Um, so above and beyond the sugar industry, it's just plain old mm-hmm. development. All the runoff from from uh, sewers and water plants and everything else. So, yeah. and you see that up here as well. You're right. constantly oh, reading yeah. about things getting yeah. dumped and oh, uh, yeah. what was it? Oh, the suds up in Pennsylvania, yeah. Pennsylvania yeah. trip. Huh? Creek or something. Terrible. There was a Pennsylvania trip to the Susquehanna that there was a, I guess it was like the soft soap brand. Yeah. Like hand soap that it had a soap spill in one of these creeks and it just filled with suds and it like was wow. horrible. Bubbles. Yeah. Bubble bath galore. Yeah. Bubble bath creek. New name. <laughs> but, 
God. Yeah, and then that went right into the Susquehanna River. They had a bad sewage spill in Deep Creek Lake a few years ago. At Deep Creek Lake? Mm Mm-hmm. I think it was actually happened last year. Well, I was, oh, it wasn't it last year when they drained it? Deep Creek? No. I I thought they just drained that not too long ago. That's, um, they drained it. Or not Deep Creek, uh, yeah, Deep Creek. That's one in Western Maryland, right? Yeah, no, they don't drain Deep Creek that. They, it does go down in winter withdrawal. They take the water down, and then Wisp Ski Resort uses a lot of water from Deep Creek. Yakagini Reservoir is the one that they really shrink down in the winter. Okay. There's a, I kayaked there this past spring, or this past fall, and the water was, you know, normal lake. But now if you go, there's a launch at a road called Mill Run mm-hmm. Road, and um, the water's 200 yards out, and it's all dry lake bed. Jeez. Wow. It's cool to see though because you can see all the structure for fishing in the summer. There's an old house foundation out there that's <laughs> sure to be good for smallmouth in the summer. But um, yeah, and the, but when it's like that, a lot of people say you got to go out there in the winter and catch the muskie and right. stuff like that because it's a little more concentrated. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I gotta try that out. That'd be cool. mm-hmm. nice muskie fishing. and northern pike in there. Smallmouth supposed to be really mm-hmm. good too. So, if somebody wants to join the club, since you're not going to be doing dues, if they don't want to enter the tournament, how do they join? Uh, you go to our website, which um, is which, what? which is uh, I know you're going to ask me that. <laughs> uh, uh, I think it's Susquehanna River Fishing Club dot com. Okay. No, it's, it's uh, missing one. Susquehanna River, River Fishing. Fishing. What is Susquehanna it? River Fishing or something. Like Susquehanna that. River Fishing dot com. Either way, it'll be. You can, it'll you can, be, you can find it. Here, yeah, you can so find it from our Facebook page. Yeah, it'll find it from our Facebook page, and then you just you just want to log in, which is at the very top of the page. Log in, mm-hmm. sign up, make a profile for yourself, and bada bing, bada boom, you're in. You guys do a newsletter or anything? Or no, we don't do a newsletter. Media. We have a uh, private chat that you would become a member of, and yeah, that's, private group. That's pretty Facebook. much where most of our communi- communication takes place we have a group chat as well which is uh the susquehanna river fishing club group chat don golf darwin hayward um that's another way of communicating but most of, it seems like most of the communication is through the group chat now yeah mm-hmm. right. which so is the, kind of bad for social media because <clears throat> you know you want that outreach in your group chat but well you know. on your social media page are you guys doing a lot of your research work out there putting we, that out there oh that's so then we also have the main page which is just the susquehanna river fishing club page okay. and mm-hmm. that's where you'll find all of our club info the okay. info um a lot of the guys you know will do like a fishing report and put that up there that's Long what people f- wants to see, you know that's what people want to see they want they want to see fish they don't want to see us talking about uh, you know about research fish, yeah. this and <laughs> right. um well, some people would though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Fishermen, yeah, they want to see you fishing, but yeah, I mean, Lou did a, uh, a, a thing for uh, trash. Up. He did mm-hmm. a little yeah. write up on some trash, and it just went fire. I mean, yeah. people ate it up. I set so. up a like a trash cleanup on the Bush River on Route Forty two years ago, and we posted about that was it. Two years ago. Yeah, that yeah. was two years ago, 2017. We did it, but uh, we got like 18 bags of trash out of right there. For the uh, where the bush is on Fort. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. It was. It's. And it's I, went, there, I went down there again a couple yeah, weeks ago. Terrible. It was. It's. Uh, people. I don't know, people live there. I'm sure there's campsites yeah. out there. The you know, homeless people live there, but um, <laughs> man, yeah, milk jugs everywhere. It's trash. Yeah. Fish and fishermen are bad too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. most. Of, I'd like yeah. to think most of the guys in our club at least pick up what they drop. I, I think. I think. Yeah, most but, of our. Club members are usually pretty, yeah, pretty good. Most, I've, everyone I've fished with in the club is, you know, conscientious about what they're leaving, leave no trace. Mm-hmm. But, and then you go to this spot like the Bush River, and there's fishing line hung on the trees. There's lure packages on the ground. There's worm boxes on the ground. Yeah, there's. It's like there's two different cultures of fishing. Yeah, you got the people that want to keep everything they catch, and you know, they're out there to drink and catch fish and not have fun. But, and you got the people that catch and release and keep every once in a while and not their trash. Right. Yeah. It seems like most kayakers are conservative minded people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The ones that I've encountered. Yeah. yeah. Then you got the leisure birders who. Yeah. I mean, you know, it is, people are going to, you know, <coughs> use fishing and enjoy yeah. fishing differently. Yeah. Who am I to say that, you know, you can't have a drink when you're fishing? If that's exactly. what you want to do, that's what you want to do. Right. As long as you're doing it legally. Yeah. There's no. But if you leave a pile of beer cans next yeah. to the Bush River, that's yeah. a little messed up. Just pick yeah. your trash yeah. up. Yeah. 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 I've taken my son, and, you know, it's it's kind of nice in the fact that I can show him and teach him, you know, we need to pick this up. You know, yeah. even though we didn't make this mess, we need to mm-hmm. pick it up. Right. Because right. if you don't, it's going to end up in the water, and then who knows where it goes from there. Mm-hmm. The 
giant ocean plastic islands. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I've seen. Yeah, I saw yeah, something on Facebook yeah. the other day. It was all these animals that were, like, messed up from litter. Like a uh, sea turtle that had a um, mm-hmm. the so, the little, yeah, the yeah. things that your six-pack comes in, yeah. the little plastic thing. You know, yeah, plastic and things. it was, like, around its yeah. midsection, and it was, like, tiny in the middle. It's yep. Yeah. Well, there's, like I know there's a company, maybe two companies out there now, that are really pushing the biodegradable yeah. six-pack yeah. holders. Yeah. Straws, a lot of, like, a straws lot of small, are getting taken out. Small breweries are doing the... the the biodegradable things, and some of them are even like edible to fish. Yeah, huh. but yeah. Ocean City, you can't have straws. You said really? straws. I just had yeah. a company. Re- and I don't know why I don't they know reached that. out to me through Hartford County Living Company out of California, or whatever. I could figure <laughs> California with California. The straws. Um, <laughs> but they asked me if they could send me some straws for for us to try. Sure, 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 sure. sure. no problem. There's they're hay straws. Uh, okay. So that's what they're made out of. They're made yeah. out of hay. So they emailed me back and asked me how were they. I said, well, yeah, they're great for cocktails. <laughs> I said, but for sodas or anything? I said, no, because they're skinny straws. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, yeah, that's what they're made for, cocktails. Oh, okay, then they're Thanks. perfect. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, for, yeah, for cocktails, they're great. You know, because you, you really think many boaters, how many boaters are out there drinking cocktails? Whew. A lot of them. Well, a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, then again, they probably are. Yeah. But most, most of them are, are beers or the kids are having sodas. Yeah. Have the mini yeah. bar yeah. out on the... Yeah, the, the, the mini bar out. <laughs> <on. laughs> Drinking Bloody Marys at 6 o'clock in the morning. There oh, go. man. God. You guys, <laughs> you guys have anything to add? Give, what's uh, the Facebook page to... Uh, Susquehanna River Fishing Club is the Facebook page. Mm-hmm. Um, then, like I said, there's the group chat. Sus- Susquehanna River Fishing Club group chat by Don Golf and Darwin Hayward. And uh, if you do decide to sign up, you can sign up on uh, through the Facebook page. It, uh, there's a link to go to our website. Uh, you can sign up, log in at the top, make a profile. That will get you access to our Susquehanna River Fishing Club members only page. And uh, just reach out to one of us. Any of us here will gladly take you fishing. Mm-hmm. Um, Besides Josh, he's super secretive. Yeah, <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> you, but no. Do, do you get a lot of people um, inquiring about, you know, hey, take me out, show me what it's about? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Oh, yeah. 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 I've yeah. taken a yeah. lot of people I never even met mm-hmm. before, just first time. I met all these guys. Yeah. Do, I met all these guys through the club. Josh, Josh yeah. takes yeah. people yeah. so when he rolls, he's yeah, got a way back. Right. <laughs> right. 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 This yeah. one guy showed up in a swan boat with like six trolling motors uh-huh. on it. He said he had a kayak and. It was like this swan thing. It was pretty cool, whatever it was. And he caught fish, man. Yeah. A swan? And it was the first what time I ever swan? met like a, him. Like a pedal it, boat? Like that. Yeah, it like, like it looked like it was in the old, old harbor. Pedal That's boat. awesome. Yeah. That they cut the swan head off and turned it into Oh, you think an actual swan? Yeah. Yeah. I would have totally let the swan head <laughs> Wow. Yeah. But I'm, yeah, I mean, I've even had clubbers <laughs> come out and fish with me in Western Maryland while I'm in school. I had a club member come out and he. We went brook trout fishing in the morning. We he got out there like nine o'clock. We went out and caught twenty brook trout, thirty brook trout, and then I dropped him off at or I showed him the Lake New Germany Lake, and he caught a nice four or five pound largemouth. Yeah, he did it all in one day, and then he drew back home. He just joined this year too, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, Elliot, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. army guy, just joined. Mm-hmm. We got to get so. him on some yellow perch. perch. He, yeah, wants, he, wants, he wants to get some yellow perch. perch. I think he's no, almost kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um Yeah, I mean reach out. You know, that's how I met Don was right. I followed him on Facebook and reached out to him and he invited me to go fishing with him. Right. And uh right. same with all these guys. Yeah, yeah. I met him all through the club and mm-hmm. just we have a you know shared c- compassion with uh with fishing, so it was kind of easy. Well, if you, if you guys do get that 501c3, let me know because I'd like to get you back on again. That way we can promote it and okay. well, actually get you guys donations too. Absolutely. Yeah, That's great. We all know that. that if you're a 501c3, donations help. So right, it that right. helps with the yeah, research definitely. and everything Absolutely. too. So, um, once again, if you want to be on the Harford County Living Podcast, it is free to come on. Just uh, reach out, email us at podcast at harfordcountyliving.com or call 443. 443- Nine eight two zero two five zero, and you guys don't do it, but you said you would speak to people if need be, right? Oh, absolutely. Oh, you yeah. can reach out to me. And everything, I so. have I have a uh, another page also, the Beard Angler. That's my fishing blog page. 
Um, that's you? Yeah, that's me. <laughs> okay. So, you know, I, I'm not an expert like Josh. Um, you know, he has the 25 years of experience over me, unfortunately. <laughs> but I'll show you everything that I know, and yeah. uh, I would love to take you out. Definitely. Good. I've Good got a page in the works, too. Yep. Just been my, slack. And my guide page is in the works. <laughs> <laughs> it's been I've been flipping too many times. <laughs> Josh, Josh spends too much time fishing. Yeah, that's my problem. Oh, God. Internet yeah, challenge. Internet challenge. It's a weekly event that you have to catch a fish each over week. Over nine inches. Over nine inches. Um, one fish. Forget how many yeah. species it is. One fish a week for, what is it, two months? Three yeah. months? For, it's a winter challenge right now. Okay. So you have to catch one fish, log it. Over nine inches, one a week. And that goes, and then whoever at the end of that couple months has the most fish caught will win. I think it's like a $100 bass pro yeah, card. It's a bass pro card. Yeah. And this is for club members. Yeah, yeah club yeah. members only. And it's okay. not the, you sure it's not the rockfish charter? For all no, the points? Then, is that all the points? Then it goes towards your member of the year points. When, like, we have another sprint. Yeah, he won the last year's. So it's like yeah. we have the tournaments. So there's benefits of being challenge. a member. Oh, yeah. I mean, Josh sure. won a free kayak. He got a yeah, $1,000 kayak. That was a $1,000 kayak. Yeah. The kayak he flipped. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was my old one. Was it a different one? <laughs> but, yeah, so um, you also get the, the tournaments. from our sponsors. Yeah, yeah and they're, all the members have, I think, most of them are 25% off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Most of the 25. So our sponsors give us a code that you can use during checkout, and it gives you 25% off their products. Dry suits. Um, dry suits. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Stinky pants is a, a fish. Oh, stinky Help pants. Help me out here. Stringer. 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 Yeah. Stringer. And uh, who's another one? Torquedo. Striper Sniper. Striper Sniper. Jig the Bay. Jig the Bay. They're all, you know, local companies. And John just, Fink with... Uh, <laughs> Real estate. Yeah, real estate. Get 25% yeah. off a house. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how that, that, no. <laughs> don't know how that works. <laughs> no. But, yeah, so we have okay. the uh, – how many tournaments are they doing this year? Five? Six. Six. Probably. Six. Man, we're, like, we're terrible. So the six tournaments plus your internet challenges – and the research events, you get mm-hmm. uh, you get points for showing up for those as well, and then all that uh, accumulates into a, a total of points. And the winner of that is going to be the winner, of the member of the year. And this year, we're giving away a uh, charter fishing trip with uh, Chesapeake. Chesapeake. Brad Foxwell. Yeah, Brad Foxwell is the captain. It's Chesapeake Bay Adventures. Mm-hmm. The name Chesapeake of the Fishing Adventures. Yeah. Chesapeake Fishing Adventures. Yeah. I think it's for what six people or something. Six people. Mm-hmm. He's got a freaking sweet Parker center console. Dude. It's brand awesome. spanking new. Yeah. We went out with him a couple months ago on it. It's He's all like about that light tackle player. jigging too. It's all light tackle, striper, stuff. top water jigging. Dang. Yeah, it's 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 really nice. Just being out on is nice. It's like a 2018 boat. It's mm-hmm. it's sweet. And Josh, you won it last year. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You won a kayak. Yeah. Who's in the lead this year? Kayak. There's, oh, there's, a, there's a hundred. I think there's a hundred people that signed up this year. So for that, wow. it'll be challenge? for everything. For the, oh, okay. they're just members. Okay. So it, it'll probably be a little bit more competitive this year for I you, Josh. So. I think we have this. So for the winner, <laughs> for the winner, we have uh, fifteen. Um, I was say right 15. now. I think three, for the internet no, challenge, there's three people tied for first. No, Me and him uh, are first. On. You're what did it start? Gen- can't win again. Did it start January first? That was the yeah. first. Yeah, that's the, yeah, that's the, win- the uh, yeah, that's winner. That was Brian Noel. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I never even signed up for it. I think I'm going to do the summer. I, I can't compete with these guys. They fish every day, so I was like, I'm not even going to disappoint myself. By signing <laughs> well, I was going to say they're down there ice fishing before yeah. they even oh, came. Yeah, here. right. Without an invite. Last <laughs> oh. Dang. Sour, sour grapes here. Yeah, you didn't get an invite. <laughs> no man. So they just called you well, and said, "Hey, come pick us up." We, we, <laughs> we assume this most people way. are working because our weekend is Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, we have all okay. Mondays and Tuesdays. Okay. So otherwise, they wouldn't have invited you. Mm-hmm. Let's face it: most of us either like to watch football or play football, whether it's professional, college, or high school. But keep in mind. Most of them people that play, they got their start somewhere, and more than likely, it was probably in rec football. And right now, the Joppa Town Seahawks are holding registration for football and cheer. We'll have a link right here on the podcast, in the podcast notes, and also on our website, hartfordcountyliving.com. So go on there and sign up. Again, that's the Joppa Town Seahawks 
football and cheerleading program. I want to share an amazing experience I had with Tar Heel Construction Group when I needed to install a new roof on my home. Let me tell you, they are truly a cut above the rest. Tar Heel Construction Group is an award-winning residential and commercial roofing and exteriors contractor focusing on roofing, siding, gutters, and solar solutions. Proudly serving Baltimore, Harford, and Cecil counties, they make it their priority to make a positive impact in the communities they serve first while providing exceptional services in roofing and exteriors. From start to finish, Tar Heel Construction Group proved to be a reputable and dependable contracted solution. Their quality installations and good communication kept me informed and reassured throughout the entire process. It's no wonder they have been voted Harford's best roofing contractor and best home improvement contractor for three years running. But here's what really impressed me. Tar Heel Construction Group's commitment to continued service and registered warranties. They stand behind their work, ensuring that I have peace of mind for years to come. What's even more remarkable is their dedication to giving back to the community. They aggressively support and uplift the neighborhoods they serve, making a positive difference in people's lives. I feel incredibly grateful and humbled to have chosen Tar Hill Construction Group for my roof. They have earned my trust and respect for being the only contractor to be voted Harford's best roofing contractor and Baltimore's best roofing contractor in the same year. So if you're looking for top-notch roofing and exterior solutions, look no further than Tar Heel Construction Group. Visit their website at tarheelconstructiongroup.com or give them a call at 410-638-7021. Again, that's 410-638-7021. Experience the excellence and community impact for yourself. Tar Heel Construction Group, building excellence one roof at a time. 